Yes, everybody, make sure you go to the It's Eric Nagel YouTube channel right now and hit the subscribe button. He has a great show with Giddles, who still hasn't done my show, and the new guy. I think his name is Josh, but it's a great show. Please subscribe and like and do all those things. This version of It's Eric Nagel has been modified from its original broadcast. Content has been edited to fit this platform. It's Eric Nagel. And it starts now. Ladies and gentlemen of the universe, the next voice you hear, it's Eric Nagel. Thank you, Scott Shannon. Hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, the year 2023 for this program called It's Eric Nagel. That is myself. Over there is the lovely and eating something very loud. Eric, I don't know if you're talking to me. I can't hear you. I know. Oh, my God. I thought it was just me. I can't hear you, Eric. You All I know is the camera just the camera just went to me while I'm eating chips. <laughs> no, it was Swimming very loud. It, it was very loud, you eating chips. chips. Yeah, dude, I couldn't hear you. But I just said, go. And then me. Yeah, eating a bunch of chips. Well, there's <laughs> the lovely and uh, well-fed Giddles. I am well-fed. Thank you very much. How's it going, everybody? Doing all right. And uh, joining us from uh, Arizona is the man known as Josh in some Hi, circles, everybody. But it's Josh, Jordan. Jinx Ronan, Jordan, whatever you want to call me. Well, the potato named you Josh, so. <laughs> that is pretty funny. I've never been called Josh by a potato. Yeah, well, well, first, first for everything. everything. <laughs> there we go. Welcome to the program, everybody. Follow us across the board on all the social medias at It's Eric Nagel. And if you want to uh, listen to us, watch us live each and every week, youtube.com slash It's Eric Nagel. We also have the Twitch channel if you want to go over there to be a part of it. Your beverage is falling apart. What shoddy wow. craft they, they, just, they just peel right off cans now. It makes no sense. That is, cooler like this. that is the true silver bullet in your hands now. <laughs> Werewolves beware. And uh, so, yeah, if you want to join us live uh, every week, go to our YouTube channel. If you're listening to us on iHeartRadio and everywhere else, uh, audio-wise, thank you so much. But if you want to see the videos after hearing the show, go on back to said YouTube channel. We will have the videos up there for you to uh, get the visual aspect of the show that you were listening to. Uh, everything seems to be running. Everything was good. Nothing changed for this program was taping would you kindly with brian johnson uh yesterday and everything kind of changed i don't know what happened i didn't what touch do you mean? this stuff new hosts this, new new studio what yeah. happened? it's a new year yeah it was two asian guys i didn't know what was going on I was like, all right well i'm still getting the check have fun make, i'm just gonna go kindry. yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> can we do that yeah i'm sure we can all right that's fine anyway so it's been a uh it's been a while since we have done the program and then the next couple of weeks is a little challenging because we got to figure out scheduling stuff we're not going to be live next thursday because i have to uh make a trip down to florida for a little bit and then i'll be back and then the following week uh have the the bennington show doing FezCon at Hard Rock Live in New York City. So I'll be that uh, at that as well. So we'll have our shows done ahead of time for uh, so you don't miss anything. And we've got some radio inquisitions coming too. Been working on those. Trying to get all of them done. There's about 14 of them that are just sitting in the wow. can. So I need wow. to, I need to uh, update some of them because some of them were taped 10 years ago and I never put them together. So my bad. But we're, we're, we'll get the original content. Plus, I'm thinking I'm going to do some updates. So I'm going to reach out to the people that I talked to and said, hey, let's do an update to where you were last time we talked. So all that kind of fun stuff. How was your holidays, New Year's, any of all of that shit? Good? Good. You seem alive, breathing. Nobody's dead, right? I mean, it was a New Year's every year. It's a... Uh something new i guess this year i went out to a uh, a bar which i don't usually do but i was just so tired of not doing anything for the last couple of years i was like you know what it's the best to not do anything but I yeah right. i know but like, i've just done it for so long because i feel like for two years i've done nothing because of like pandemic and shit and i not only new year's i just mean in general just not doing anything and i was like you know what i'm not just gonna sit around my room this year so i'm gonna go to the bar and i went to the bar and it was a very strange night at the bar 
And then I was like, you know what? I don't know who like, these people are. The bar that I used to go to, like, changed their interiors. It was all different. It was like, you know, when they film Wayne's World and and uh, they're in the basement of the studio basement? Like, this isn't your basement. Like, that's what it was but like. But it, it is your like, basement. This, yeah. Yeah. It was just like, this isn't the bar I used to go to, but it is. Like, what is happening here? Right. And then uh, I thought all the people at the bar were weird. And then on the uh, walk home... I realized that people are just weird on New Year's, and it did the. Well, yeah, it wasn't specific to the bar because the freaks I was passing on the sidewalk, like, I don't know what what is people's. Uh, urge to <laughs> what wear. is with the people's urge to dress up like nineteen twenties like flapper era like stuff on New Year's? Like, why is I've that? Noticed why not, that why that's not go the further trend. back? Like, that's, go back to like eighteen fifty. Be a cowboy. Like, that's. Why, uh, <laughs> Could you imagine? Uh, when uh, the vi- the movie of Great Gatsby came out, it's all is that, that a New Year's movie? It is at at some point. It is yeah. How long? I just what, yeah. You, I saw hours. that a lot too. Uh, and yeah, it's I, like I why why the flappers? Because everybody looks back to that time <laughs> period, of, you know, before the market crashed and and depression and everything else kicked in. Um, you know, when money was flowing free and loose like the drinks and the women they were all just you know spending money spending every dime to have a wonderful time putting on the oh, yeah, that's the that's the song have a special time <laughs> have a that's time. not how it goes i, 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 I think giddles is on to something i think next year we should all dress up like cowboys yeah right and then like, someone's gonna dress up like a, like the actual dallas cowboys and they're just gonna ruin all of it Call it cultural appropriation. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, like a beer just get tackled. Like wrong right. bar, wrong cowboy. What do you do? Sir? Like say if you had, you know how they have Santa Con every year, which is stupid. <laughs> if you had like a like a cowboy roundup in Manhattan, and it's just a big bar crawl, yeah. right? But they're all dressed up. They've got six shooters on, on their bandoleros and all that stuff. How is the city going to enforce the fact that look, there's thousands of people downtown in Lower Manhattan dressed as cowboys, dressed like cowboys, with six shooter guns? It's like it, it, the cops aren't going to do anything. <laughs> like you know what? We'll just fence off the village and let them <laughs> let them deal it. If, with movie, some if movies justice. have taught me anything, all they have to do is just put up some uh, like a toll booth, and then someone's going to have to go back for a shit full of dime. So. There you go. If, if the movies have told me anything, they're going to be like, oh my God, what are those motorized uh, horses <laughs> carriages running around these streets as right. they get run over by an SUV? You go down, you just see them all moseying down the street oh, very like slowly. Mosey what are moseying here? downtown? You, you can't even get through with an electric scooter. Like, it's that bad. Everyone's just Ugh. taking their time. <laughs> Mosey is the worst, like, pace to walk at. <laughs> Uh, Frankie Bronson in the chat first up tonight saying God bless the Supreme Court of New York there's gun stores in Times Square now are there really no there's not that's just the police station oh okay <laughs> well I know they opened up the first uh, dispensary in Manhattan yeah the housing works one I haven't gone to it yet I'm, I'm interested to check it out but the bodegas are so cheap but it's probably also because it's probably not good weed from the bodegas but yeah I'm gonna go check out the housing works one maybe uh, maybe I'll do it Sunday I'm off I'm Let not, me know because yeah. uh, I want to kind of compare the pricing because I know, like in California, the pricing at like all the dispensaries <laughs> are actually Venmo cheaper. Venmo Giddles to, to grab Venmo, you some yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah I want to send you some. Time. I want to send you some ketchup if you can just send me, you know, an edible or two. Mailing no, it back in resealed tomato cans. Right now, well, I'm just curious because Arizona sucks for those kinds of things. Like the dispensaries here, they're expensive. Compared You're right to, like, on the border. California. You think you'd be getting good stuff? You would think. Hmm. Well, it's interesting because like the bodegas, like the price of weed since it became legalized here has just completely bottomed out. Like I can go to the bodega and get an ounce of weed for a hundred dollars. That used to be like four hundred and fifty dollars. Like it is insane how cheap things got. That being said, I don't think the dispensaries are going to be because they're going to have different rules and regulations. So um, if it's anything like Massachusetts, it'll probably be pretty good price. Like Massachusetts, when I went More there, like it was like... More like Taxachusetts, right? I was right? just going to say that. Yeah, exactly. Right, guys? Just like Taxachusetts. Or if so you anyway, watch Married with Children, PMSachusetts, as they call yeah. it, <laughs> next to Pregnaho. Go ahead. But yeah, so like Massachusetts, the price is like up like between 280 and like 300 for an ounce, depending mm. on what you were getting, which is like, which was like still at that time mm. a good deal. Uh, but I feel like New York's probably going to be in that price range for gotcha. wheat. We'll see. They're op- they're starting round two of the dispensaries in New Jersey now because they only opened thirteen to begin with. 
that are yeah. state monitored or state run or something like that. That was pretty um, recently, right? Like within no, the last they're not state run. They're state it was monitored. Like years before New York, actually. So it's wow. been about a year, maybe two. But I think about a year at least for the dispensaries open in Jersey. They're going for the second round of um, other licenses and stuff to open up. So there's one um, not far from where I live, about ten minutes away, and then one in town is. Uh, is it called Waken Nagels? No. It should be. <laughs> There's another one that's going to be opening in town. Like, uh, they were cleaning the whole area up, and there's been talk that that's what's going in there. So, good. I'm all for it. Right next to the Dunkin' Donuts. Good. Get rid of that. Uh, get that shit. And if they can get... Look, here's... The, I'm going to have a... Uh, I'm having an issue. I'm all for the legalization of that. I'm all for people, you know... Uh, consuming it responsibly and also the medical benefits and everything from it but I am now fully if there's a bill I'll, I'll write and support and donate whatever I have to to ban vaping because it's gotten so fucking out of hand where Dude, you're on the tra- everywhere here you're on the train you're in Starbucks you're anywhere and it's just clouds of smoke coming out of people's noses in force like a dragon all the time it's so gross. I can't. It's weird. A couple of years ago, I was at a Nine Inch Nails concert, and it was before vaping was really big. And I, I swear to you, all I kept smelling was caramel in the air. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? I thought I was having a stroke. And then it's like, <laughs> apparently, that's everything. Like, I'm like, I'm dying. Like, I legit couldn't believe, like, I was smelling it, and no one else smelled it around. And I, I heard somebody say, you know, over near... Um, when they're having all the concerts and stuff over at Madison Square Garden, I heard a girl outside. They were talking about vaping stuff. She goes, saying that she liked the smell of vape, and she goes, "Oh, the, somebody had a, a fruity pebbles vape or something like that. It smelled so right. nice." I'm like, "You're smelling somebody else's breath and somebody else's exhaling." Of that scent. It's not the scent of the vape that you're taking the hit off of. She's talking about like walking through the clouds of people and she likes the smell of it. I'm like, that's disgusting. That is hideous. And then the, when I, I saw one guy where he just was shooting it out, he like took a big oh, the hit. Dragon, yeah. He took a big hit and then did a big stream out of his mouth, like a big cloud stream in there. And then I, you think he's done. All of a sudden he goes like that and it comes shooting mm-hmm. straight out two streams. And it, it, yeah, it looks like a dragon. It, it was so gross. I'm like, I, I can't deal with this anymore. Like, I hate smoking. I'm not a fan of smoking. I've been around people who've just done nothing but smoke in my life, and it's been disgusting. And I know what it does to the to the house, to the your clothing, to the furniture. You like, you move a couch, and you're like, oh, the carpet used to be beige. You didn't know that, you know? Oof. Oh um, my god, yeah. When you move shit, you're like, why is this a different? <laughs> oh, yeah. What's of my all of that. Like? The plants are thriving, but the house is just falling apart, and. <laughs> Then and then the vaping now and I, I just I can't I I'm fully in support of uh there's certain areas now it might be Vegas Vegas or California somebody banned indoor vaping hmm. and it was recent too I, I I'll have to look that up but I like that up. whole thing where I you know everybody wants to do whatever they want whenever they want at every possible moment but sometimes you you got to have some boundaries it's like if you're on the I, fucking train don't you can't be doing that. No, I'm just not a fan of the vaping just because like, I don't understand why you want that, that flavor in your lungs. I understand like wanting to taste it. California was, by the way, California, sorry to cut you off. California banned uh, in-store flavored vape sales. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, you're not allowed to uh, prop 31 allowed voters residents passed in 2020. All this stupid legally. So anyway, um, yeah, flavored vapes and, and in stores and everything like, I guess, not just like a dispensary or, or some kind of like uh, smoke shop or something, but, you know, at 7-Eleven and those kind of places that had all the, the fruit cartridges and stuff, because they did it around here a long time ago. You can't get the fruit flavor stuff in, in any of the stores. I think it was a national thing, because like what um, not Uncle Phil was saying is that they banned Jewel. That J U U L. Yeah, Jewel you can't got buy those anymore. Because that was because they were saying it was marketing. Yeah, their marketing was, was, was like. Yeah, that's what it was. It was a whole legal issue with that. Then certain by state, not by federal, the flavoring where guys mm. were, like adults were smoking 
like Swedish fish and gummy bear and cotton candy and all this other shit. And it's not making it clear, which is where Jewel got into a lot of trouble, not making it clear that it is a tobacco product and does contain chemicals and all this other shit. Um, so California has now just banned all that stuff. And I know that they're freaking out out there because they're the ones that usually pass a lot of shit before the rest of the country does. Yeah. Um, for weed, for more progressive idea, ideology stuff. But this is the first kind of step backward. I mean, I think it's a step forward, but for people who are into all that stuff is a step backwards for them. So it's just odd to see California take that. I don't know, but California like also labels everything. Like I get potato chips from California that, that are just like, true. these might have lead in them. And I just, I'm like, I'm not buying, I'm not eating these. Like, you know, yeah, like, there's some, they, they have California to disclose like, Everything. Yeah, they have to disclose that kind of stuff. Like, this could cause possible cancer due to lead or something like that. You see that in like almost everything. Yeah. Uh, Frankie Bronson saying, yeah, it should have uh, be the same rules as cigarettes. The only additional thing that needs to go is the stigma associated with smoking weed. It depends where you are. Like, anywhere around here, there's really no stigma about no, smoking stigma weed. Here. You can be out. I've seen people because, you know, our one studio is near Madison Square Garden. So anytime I'm walking over there, there's people waiting for um, what's playing right now. Ranger games and, and uh, yeah. concerts and stuff. Even when Jingle Ball was uh, about a month ago <laughs> there, the big iHeart concert, there's people just standing outside with, with a joint just like it was a cigarette. Yep. They're lowering it and they drop it down. They smash it out or they were doing this and put it back in their bag and, and took it in and did whatever they were doing. There's nobody really giving like, oh, my God, they're smoking weed anymore. Maybe in more rural or, or suburban areas, but at least in the in the Northeast, no one gives a shit. Cal I'm sure yeah. the West Coast, too. Nobody gives a shit uh, about mm, all no, of that. Not really. Everyone, if you light up a cigarette, people will scream at you. But they're, if you're lighting up uh, a joint and everything, nobody says anything. And now the jewel... The uh, vape stuff, not the jewel stuff, but the vape stuff is now starting yeah. to become a problem because more and more people, even though they enjoy indulging, are realizing people are getting way out of hand with all this stuff. When you're doing it in a department store, you're doing it in a McDonald's, you know, well, and half That's of them are carrying stuff. around like a machine the size of a fucking like brick to yeah. do this stuff. And you just look like an idiot. Well, <laughs> like, some I'm have sorry, the little like, things. The other dumb. ones have that. It's like a it's like a battery pack with a giant. Right. Thing. It looks like the thing you catch the ghosts in from Ghostbusters. The <laughs> <laughs> proton pack. Or whatever, yeah. Like. The, but yeah, uh, like people will like vape on the trains. I'm like, dude, don't do that. I, I prefer if you were smoking a cigarette over the vape. <laughs> like, I would like. I don't want to smell cinnamon buns. Get out of here. Ugh. Yeah, and it's not like you're smell again. You're not like smelling it like a like a um, like a Yankee candle. You know, or a Glades plug-in <laughs> thing. We're like, oh, that smells kind of good. When you smell the actual scent, it's already been exhaled by some disgusting person, and that's what you're walking through, and that's fucking gross. Yeah, I'm not walking through someone else's pancakes. And it's also <laughs> nauseating, too, when you're watching video. If you're watching a, a live stream of somebody or um, a podcast or um, one of those, what was I watching? Not uh, a, a review video, like the uh, reaction video, where they're playing oh. a song to one guy or they're playing a music video that somebody hasn't seen and they're talking about it. So they have the video there, you see them, and the guy leans forward, like not out of camera, leans forward this way. So his head's like down here, half his head. Where's my hand? Like there, like there. He's leaning, gets something, comes back up with his vape thing like this. Takes a hit, puts it off to the side. And you're watching the video. I'm like, okay, that's not pretty good. And he goes, <laughs> so there's this big cloud coming out. And now it's up in these in the room. So their little version of, of them from their camera is all getting clouded. And then he did the dragon thing again. I'm like, everyone Love does this that. stupid dragon thing. So <laughs> like that. Now there's smoke in front of them. They're in this little corner where the view, music video is up here. They're down here. And it's just a cloud mist kind of with them there while the music video is going on. I was like, this is disgusting. I can't I'd be even, more impressed if he did it, and then like when the smoke cleared, it was someone else completely different sitting there. I'm like, all right, it's those two Asian guys again. They're just taking over every show. <laughs> every one. Like he just he fogs up the whole room. Then all of a sudden, it just turns into a club. Yeah. Oh. So again, I support your right to be able to do it. I don't support that the, the fact that you feel that you can do it anywhere, anytime that you want. Right. Just uh, not something that we need in our life. All right, moving on. Um, so also, I want to talk about a couple of things with New Year's. So we had some uh, deaths right at the right at the last moment there. 
literally like, I've been looking for your pictures. Day. Yeah, there. Uh, Barbara Walters died right before um, New Year's Eve was mm-hmm. over, and that became the big deal because wh- whoever was who else had, somebody else had died earlier that week. I'm trying to remember who it was. Oh, it was the Pope. No, the Pope, Pope was after. Benedict. Oh, Pope Palpatine. Yeah. Yeah. Pope Palpatine. <laughs> That's exactly it. Pope Palpatine. Palpatine. <laughs> uh, the Palpatine. The uh, somebody else had died before Barbara Walters did, and as soon as Barbara Walters died, all that stuff was not on TV anymore. It was all about Barbara Walters passing. Um, she got it in in the last minute, and you <laughs> good know, for her. yeah, good for her. It's like I'm going you out with buzzer beater. A, she went out with a literal <laughs> buzzer <bang>. beater. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, <laughs> that happened. And then you had the Pope, and then uh, this week, and then also this week, James Buster Douglas, co-founder of David Buster's, died. Oh, he killed, oh, he killed himself. Yeah. Oh, shit. I didn't know he killed himself. Yeah, huh? like, so I think it was a slice of mis- was under mysterious circumstances, circumstances. Not or? James Buster Douglas. That's the boxer. That's the boxer. James <laughs> Buster Corley is the co founder of Dave and Buster's. Yes, he was found uh, face down in a ball pit. Wow. <laughs> That's not what I'd actually be more impressed if uh, Buster yeah. Douglas was the one who actually founded Dave and Buster's. He was in that giant gigantic claw machine that they have where you can actually go into the side and you're as big as the the that's his memorial they're just gonna hang him by the claw machine that's how you go they grab his coffin they pick it up they move it over there and then just let the coffin go right into the into the ground he could have got the better coffin if he had more tickets but instead he got a pencil eraser he's like all right lobster harmonica just watched that episode the other day fantastic that's pin pals by the way if you're looking for that episode. Great episode. all of it's such a great episode uh yeah he passed I'm drinking a cider you do that um i wanted to show was, you oh, go ahead sorry ken block the uh he was a pro rally car Mr. driver block. um he helped Mr. co-found block. dc shoes he died in a snowmobile accident Jesus. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He was like separated that. from his group and he was going up a hill and it, he like it unbalanced and it flipped on top of him and they found him dead. Damn. Yeah. That shit's crazy. Nuts, like man. snowmobiles, ATVs. I've talked to like so many people who are just like, yeah, you buy one of these if you want to die. Like that's basically. Well, it. they're like, fun. It doesn't take, but people it doesn't take get, a, fall, a small fall off that to, will kill you. They're fun, but people forget the fear that goes with or not the fear but the respect of the vehicle you know of what you're doing so they're like i'm gonna jump off a bank you know i'm gonna do trick shots and stuff and then all of a sudden the the atv doesn't go off this you know huge ramp that you made out of dirt and hay it it (laughs) fucking falls apart and then that thing comes and crushes you and like i didn't see why that would happen really you didn't see why that would happen right um all right, before we, we go shout out to David Chandler in chat for the 10 gift subs. Thank you. He did? Oh. Yeah, he gave out 10 gift subs to a bunch of people in the chat. Thank you, nice. David. Thank you, very mu- uh, thank you very much. We do appreciate that. Since you brought up the snowmobile stuff, uh, before I get into the other thing I was going to talk about here, Jeremy Renner got hurt. Um, snowmobile accident. So apparently he was trying to... Um, and so he suffered chest trauma and orthopedic injuries. His leg got really fucked up because mm-hmm. um, it wasn't just like a snowmobile. The one that have like the, the blades on the bottom where you can glide over the snow. It had the treads like it was essentially well, a tank. It wasn't even a snowmobile. It was one of those uh, like you know, snow plows, like, you know, plow the road type of things. Because right. like yeah. he lives in like, Lake Tahoe or something. So, um, yeah, he was trying. Uh, he he must not be making the big MCU money if he has to plow his own driveway. <laughs> No, he has a um, like a ranch or something up near yeah. uh, Lake Tahoe. I think that's mm. where it was. So he yeah. he loves mm. going there during the winter time. Like he's all about the cold yeah, and the ice. It's probably and fucking awesome. So that's what he he's all about. That. So last week after this snow plowing incident, which occurred after Renner uh, was helping free a vehicle driven by a family member out of the snow. Um, after exiting the snowcat. Oh yeah, just snowcat was the same thing in uh, Shining, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, the, like it's like wide base, big, um, big treads. Right. It's it was gnarly looking. After exiting the snowcat vehicle, it slid forward and injured uh, Renner as he attempted to stop the fourteen thousand pound vehicle. Jesus. Well, I guess what had happened was yeah, he was he got the car that I guess a family member was stuck in the snow. He got it all the way back up to his house and got out. And it started to roll. So I think he attempted to get back into it. Right. And 
didn't work and it ran over his leg and yeah it sounds horrific because i've saw the picture of this this thing and uh, no thank you it's like eighteen thousand pounds i think it's huge, the huge he's just like he's he's alive after that like that's that's a crazy freak accident to be in he yeah. posted a video this morning on uh I, instagram I, I have that right here um, Perfect. do you think anybody made the joke he went from the mcu to the icu I'm you sure just did. I understand that, but do you think I'm other sure people have done? Because if I'm thinking of that, I'm thinking that it has to have been done a million times since this incident actually happened. So, yeah, he posted a video that said a not so uh, a not no wait a not no great ICU day. His writing uh, <laughs> turned into an amazing. Man got run over by a snowplow. I think his English is okay. <laughs> Uh, turn to an amazing spa day with my sister and mama. Thank you so much. So he posted this video here of him getting a spa treatment or something at the yeah. hospital. <laughs> He's so sexy. Mm -hmm. Yay. Check it out. Literally, look at all the blood. I was well, he's got oh, he's... I was okay. definitely weak or so. Did they got a white <laughs> Gross. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, he's not moving for a while. Uh, and he's got season yeah. two of uh, of Hawkeye that's supposed to be shooting soon. <laughs> Guess <laughs> not, that ain't not, happening. Not for a long time. Well, th with the way they do all that CGI stuff, and it's not like other people doing CGI. Like, Marvel really has a whole world where even if you like they could just scan everybody and not actually have anybody live in the in the feature with what they right. do. Yeah. Do you think that's what they do? They have a body scan of him, and they I'm like he can do certain face and, and like from here up kind of reactions, and then they put him in to the movie as a CGI character. So for I believe it was um, Avengers Endgame, he had broken both of his arms. So they oh, had right. remember. So they most some of some of that stuff was his arms were CG because he wore these like green socks while his arms were broken and they just put different arms in. So I, it's not that weird to think about. Like I'm sure they have something out there. The actor said there were 20 to 30 chairs stacked up 20 feet high and his arms broke after he fell because the rigging of the chairs broke. I, uh, I broke along with it and fell on the ground and broke both my arms. So he was sitting on a stack of 20 to 30 chairs or he was trying to stack them up and then fell over. I'm assuming he's the lowest paid Marvel person. So after every shoot, he's got to clean Maybe up this the is auditorium. Why he's the lowest paid <laughs> one. Stacking chairs. It's like, look, you're lucky know. we're paying you at all with the insurance premiums that we have to pay on you and the life, right? yeah, the, the life insurance. You're lucky to be in this movie at all. So take what we're giving they make you. Him, they made him do the milk crate challenge over and over again. <laughs> right. While yeah, doing so the ice he's bucket a, challenge, <laughs> it's like he's, it's like you're not supposed to do all of it at once. <laughs> he's got the a show ice coming challenge on, while doing the crate challenge. Right, he's got a show coming on Disney Plus this year too. It's like a home renovation show. That is, it's uh, renovations, renovations. I think is what it's called. Yeah, I knew it was a it was so a pun stupid, name, but whatever. <laughs> uh, but he seems to be doing okay. So good for Jeremy Renner. Um, well, critical, but still, you know, I mean, he's talking somewhat. Yeah, if but if he's at this stage, eventually he'll be back, right? In some way, shape, or form. Look, worst case scenario, if they gotta do animated stuff or books on tape or whatever, any of those video game stuff, they'll still have him for voice work. So, yeah, he'll for sure. he'll always have something that he he can do, even if he can't physically um, do what he used to do as far as being. And may, look, maybe this from a business standpoint, maybe that you know. The fact that they were doing the Hawkeye series and he was training Kate Bishop kind of works. Hawkeye? Hawkeye. Hawkeye is in the Black Adam movie that nobody liked. Oh, I didn't see Hawk Man. And yeah, no one watched that. <laughs> I didn't see it because Hawkeye was in it. Don't label him. <laughs> you don't know who he is. Hawk uh, person. <laughs> the uh, the fact that you know, like, look, we weren't ready to do this yet, but we're in a place where we may have to speed up the transition where maybe Jeremy Renner's character becomes more of a of a mentor in the in the sense of uh, he sits back and then arranges things so that she goes out and does it right who knows who knows just make them uh, like in a so remember I think a while back Birds of Prey TV show on Fox where they had Oracle was the one that used to be uh, Barbara Gordon when she got shot so she was Steve in her uh, wheelchair yeah 
So he could just be the 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 guy in the chair, as it were, mm-hmm. and just be in her ear. I'm sure they could work something. Frank, you're saying cold blooded executive Iraq. You're right. <laughs> on the other show, I was talking about why the NFL wasn't wrong for waiting an hour um, when that yeah. incident happened. And uh, if you want to hear the reason for that, go watch uh, this week's episode of Would You Kindly, and you can hear the full explanation on it. I'm not getting into that now. Um, all right, yeah, move, we're all sports people here. Moving on to. Uh, <laughs> what I wanted to talk about with CNN and uh, New Year's Eve. So there was a big stink going into New Year's Eve where uh, Ryan Seacrest, who hosts Dick Clark's New Year's Rocking Eve on ABC, was saying that uh, this year that maybe Anderson Cooper and and uh, get him out of here. Anderson Cooper <laughs> and so um, Andy Cohen get too drunk and they wind up bothering the other broadcasts that right. are going on. And I'm sitting there. I'm not the biggest fan of those guys, but good. Let them. New Year's Eve sucks. New York New Year's Eve television is terrible. Those guys at CNN, they're getting hammered and they're fucking with all the other network stuff going on. Do it. I would love to That's see. Funny. I would love to see. It's like Jocktober for actual news people. <laughs> no, it's assault on the media is what it yeah, is. Yeah, that, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. So let them do it. If Andy Cohen wants to go over and start blowing a trumpet while, well, well, um, you know, bad bunnies trying to perform over there. Do it. I would love to be watching the show and go, who's the guy blowing the trumpet off beat? This doesn't make any sense. Anyway, so just this beca- balls it became him, a big like- thing about CNN not um, trying to restrict shit. the use of alcohol during the New Year's Eve broadcast, which is so dumb. This That's when you should be boozing this up because you're lucky anyone's even watching at this point. So do these things. Stop trying to be, you know, family friendly and moral and whatever. Cause drunken debauchery. There's people in diapers sitting in pens out there all day. How civilized are we trying to be here for these right. New Year broadcasts? So they kind of do that. But then there's a second portion of the CNN broadcast that involves the, their anchor, Don Lemon. Do you know who he is? Uh, yeah. He does their uh, their 8 or 9 o'clock primetime broadcast uh, on CNN. And he's always a problem, too, because when, it, when they're done with Andy and um, a- a- Anderson Cooper in New York, they go to... Don Lemon, who's boozing it up and, and acting a fool down in New Orleans all the time because he's from that area. And then they do that because New Orleans is in the central time zone. So they get the 12 o'clock in New York. They get the one o'clock uh, in uh, New Orleans. And he goes down there and they're living it up doing big, you know, Mardi Gras fun things. Well, they may have put the uh, the restrictions on New York, but they didn't do it in New Orleans and they missed the ball drop. Wow, so, they really dropped the ball on that one. They did. Wow. So instead of uh, having you know the big New Year's cheer and what all Lang Syne playing or whatever, they were drunk and then started playing back that ass up <laughs> live on television. <laughs> back that clock up. We we missed it. <laughs> like what the fuck? Yeah. So uh, I want to show you this here just to give you an example of of what you weren't seeing when New Year's. Was <laughs> Wow. Here we go. New Year's. And they're not even playing the radio edit. The club DJ's pulling it down because he realized he's playing a song. Oh, he asked for about the countdown and it had already passed. Yeah, there's like 10, 15 seconds past the countdown drop. And the That's DJ's hilarious. playing a song that can't be good for television, and he keeps yanking it down. By the way, they're cable. They could play that. Nobody gives a fuck. They're not going to get right. sued or anything or any kind of fines. Let it play. But nothing was prepared. If you were going to do that, have the radio edits if you're spinning live for television, right? Didn't have that prepared. They were too drunk. Nobody was paying attention. CNN fucks things up every year, and it's, I don't understand why everyone has a problem with this. I think it's hilarious. There was one year we were watching it that he was so hammered they had to cut him off. Like he was, he's wearing a loud, obnoxious colored coat. And was he's it just, Anderson he's like, or Andy Cohen? No, this was Don Lemon. Don Lemon. Don okay. Lemon down in in Louisiana going nuts, and then they had to cut him off because it got everyone was so drunk. The producers, the camera guys, the, like nothing was was making sense. What you're watching, leave that on. Leave it on. 
Just let it be. You're going to get it's such funny. high ratings at a time that nobody's watching television. Everyone's well, going to tune over and you go, you got to see what the fuck's not happening on CNN. They're trying to avoid controversy, and it's the whole reason why they got rid of Kathy Griffin. Yeah. And then this is happening. Like, you you, you just, you. it's the same thing. It's just a different location now. Because uh, Kathy used to be just drunk all the time doing stuff to Andy and everything. So, or Anderson. Yeah, but she pissed off a lot of people, and everyone was just yeah. like, fuck her. Uh, David Chandler in the chat saying, lemon party's hard, dude. Lemon party. <laughs> yes, you're right. Yeah, yeah finally some good television. Funny. Exactly. Yeah, it should be that way. <laughs> you would, <laughs> Frankie Bronson, you wouldn't understand Iraq. It's called urban programming. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but they shouldn't cut it off television. It may not be for my audience, but leave it on. Just let it go. At that point, who cares? You don't have no sponsors one at one in the morning. I'm actually surprised they didn't cut away from it. Yeah. Like they knew he was behind. He wasn't paying attention. They Obviously, were wasn't. All drunk too. Yeah, yeah the control room. Back in that ass There's stuff, no one in the control room. That. They went to go. <laughs> they're all out there. Yeah, they're peeing. They're looking out the window. They're looking Times Square. They're like, oh, look at them. There's no one in the control room because they were watching the ball drop. <laughs> yeah. Like they, just, they were just like, well, if he's not going to do it, we'll go somewhere and do it. Like, this only happens once a year. So dumb. So, so dumb. Money's New Year's party. He didn't even have a clock. <laughs> Don't tell people how I live. All I right. guess they were. I think they were taking shots. Andy and um, Anderson, too. At like what? mystery shots. Uh, no, actually like shots of alcohol when they weren't on camera. Oh, like trying so, to get around the van. I'm like, Ugh. it's like, excuse me a second. And then you just see this. happen. <laughs> They're the doing screen. the vape thing where they go down. Ugh. Sorry, I was yawning, man. I'm really tired tonight. <laughs> just constantly yawning. Constantly <laughs> yawning. Can't it's handle late. it. Yeah. Uh, all right. So there was that. And uh, did we have anything else? New Year's Eve. We talked about that. No, no, no. Uh, there's a guy who tattooed his face for the World Cup that's having massive regrets now. Oh, oh now is he? Yeah. <laughs> did his team win? Um, no. Oh yeah, that's probably. A big oh wait, yes then. they did. Yes they did. Sorry. Um, and that's probably an even worse regret. Yeah. Oh, get it just this. Says Argentine and then nah. Uh, get at this. The bottom. I bet you cannot guess what this kid does for a living. Um, I'm assuming uh, probably plays Fortnite. I'm going to say professional vape guy. Or a rapper. or He is an influencer. I was going to say an influencer. <laughs> what is he influencing? Um, regret. Yeah. <laughs> and he's influencing people to stay in school. <laughs> oh, influencer uh, instantly is regretting his Lionel Messi face tattoo. It's, it's That's how you pronounce it, right? M-E-S-S-I, Messi, the yeah. big. Yeah. No, it's, it's Mechi. Mechi. <laughs> Messi. A Lionel Messi fan uh, says uh, with re he's regretting tattooing the footballer's name on his forehead following the Argentinian victory of the World Cup. Uh, he And he's, get this. Is it at least spelled right? He's not uh, even Argentinian. He's Colombian. He's from New Jersey. Oh. Yeah. Oh. It would make sense if it was some dumbass in the United States. This guy's from Colombia. He's an influencer in Colombia. Um, no, he's not. His name uh, Maycol at Maycol, Maycol, M A I C O L. However you want. His to name is now it. Messi. Yes, because he's got it tattooed on his head. Uh, shared the mocking, uh, the shocking moment when he got the Messi tattooed in huge letters across his head in a social media post. Now, Ugh. two weeks later, the influencer is more widely known um, uh, as a mockery and says he hates the tattoo. Let me see if I can uh, bring up the. Yeah, yeah I need to see. I need to see this tattoo. I need to see yeah, how terrible. It up like, right now. Is it like huge so, like across his forehead? Yeah, across like, his forehead, it says messy, and then on his cheek are stars and deal. Yeah. Oh, I can't be a real tattoo. It looks terrible. It looks like a like someone did a a marker. Yeah, that looks like a pen. There Ugh. it is. Ugh, it's just messy. Like who did? <sighs> Like the stencil looks terrible. Like who did this? That's what I'm saying. Like this is so bad. And here's the thing: I've I got a bunch of tattoos, and tattoo artists like <gasps> will not tattoo your face. Like that is like one thing that a lot of tattoo artists like don't want to. You do. have like, to know a guy who knows. You have to like guy. really yeah, know a person rough. who will tattoo your face. Like that's like kind of like a no go in like tattoo world stuff. You know, like that's yeah. just it's called a job. Stuff. But I don't think I don't think that was real. To be honest, like it looked fake. It looked fake. 
Uh, Gabby in the chat, our pal from Mexico way eh, says uh, why with a lot of whys across the screen and Bartholomew is saying, yeah, that's uh, Sharpie. I don't know. Because like the purple, like the purple outline, like that's normal. Like you get like that purple outline. Right. But like, I don't know. It, just, it looks Apparently really there's bad. video of this. So. I mean, I don't have it right now, but uh, well, well, no, I mean, like, like we'll see this guy until he's dead, like somewhere, right? <laughs> like he's just gonna, he's gonna be walking around yeah. with a messy forehead. Uh, initially, uh. he defended his decision to get the tattoo, telling his followers, "I'm not harming anyone. I'm not doing anything legal, uh, illegal." I guess when he started putting the outline photos, people were giving him a lot of shit for it. Uh, but now he's admitted in a recent social media video that he wishes he could turn back the clock, saying, "I have regret having done the tattoo uh-huh. because instead of." Uh, br- bringing me positive things it has led to a lot of negative things both personally and for my family his dad probably kicked the shit out of him and pro- <laughs> and you know rightfully so and then when his dad was done his mom went in there and did the same thing like the whole family's just lined in the she hallway just took off her to slipper and just there. started throwing him some slipper. ref comes out with like a red flag and then he's just like pretending on the ground and then once the flag comes out he gets up he's like and runs out of the house uh, <laughs> I didn't think I would say this so soon I'm very proud of it the first few days but I completely regret it uh, they just say that I'm not a positive example for society you're not you're not <laughs> you're a loser uh, be careful with your words you don't know the damage you can do to someone because of social media you don't know how uh, you can destroy your life We've been saying this forever, not because of like tattooing is not something that we were ever considered uh, uh, considering to be worried about for kids, for um, impressionable young adults that are on social media and doing what they do and say what they say. Never did getting a face tattoo come into the thought of, th- you know, that what that girl's doing online there might be a problem. It was never a tattoo. It was always something worse. But here we are now. This is now a thing. Uh, tattooists in Argentina were flooded with requests for messy tributes following the triumphant World Cup win. Many fans were also left in hysterics after one fan got a tattoo of the Paris Saint Germain striker on his back that was labeled the worst ever by some viewers. <laughs> All right, so the face thing is terrible and that ruins your life. Getting the thing on your back, at least you can cover it. Right. But the back thing is probably more intense and more painful. And if it looks bad, like if it's a no regrets kind of situation, <laughs> you know, in the faces and the nose is you in can't the even wrong see spot, it. Yeah. It's just you can never go to the pool or the beach or out in public yeah, without a shirt no. again. Yeah, I that's I want to get more tattoos. There are limits to what I want to do. I'm not going to do my ribs. I, I'm I'm like I'm a wuss. I'm not going to do it. Like I'm not going to do my hands. I'm not going to do my face. I'm not going to do my neck. Like there's yeah. places I'm just not going to do. A because it hurts, and B, I, I just don't need to have a big face tattoo. Right. Especially yeah, like, when it looks like magic marker. Yeah. Like I'm going to probably stick to my arms. Maybe like my legs maybe something like maybe like my upper back here but that's probably it like i'm not gonna get george's chest face done. right in the middle of his back oh my god he's right here yep <laughs> uh david chandler nobody in the u.s likes the world cup ex- except high school soccer player parents that's not that's true. not true there's plenty of people in this country that love it because they're gambling on it oh yeah, yeah i was just gonna say there's people who love it every four years yes because they're they gambling can, on it yeah i talked about recently on i think on this program where i said uh, there was somebody i knew i was talking to about the world cup and they were all into it i said i've never known you to be into the, oh i love it all the time and then they wrote they sent me a text later it says i really need iran to win and i wrote back and like you don't give a shit about this sport you're gambling aren't you because who says that who says I really need or, uh, uh, Iran to win going into the next bracket? Nobody. You root no. for your comp, uh, your company, your country, or that's it. If you say other players in other countries that you have no affiliation with or no ties to in, in any way, shape, or form, it's gambling. Wouldn't admit it, but I know it was fucking gambling because who says some something that dumb? <laughs> I really need Qatar to get into the second round. I know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Gabby saying, did you see all the videos of the people in Argentina celebrating and almost dying by falling uh, and doing stupid things? Yes, I've seen that. I've seen it in Philadelphia when the Eagles won. I've seen oh, it in almost and any city. college championship. Yeah. Uh, I mean, come on. A lot yeah, of great sports videos fans, Sports fans, I will say, 
are very destructive when they win. Like they're just like, hey, our oh, team yeah. won. Let's burn down the city it represents, and then let's fall off the back of a truck while cheering. You know, well, like, I, I think when I think it was Philadelphia, right? They were in the World Series. Philly was like, we're preparing for them to win or lose, and they yeah. had to like like grease up all the city poles, knowing people were going to climb up them and do stupid shit. Like, oh my god, that's such a Philly thing. That's we if had you to win grease or the lose. poles, the people <laughs> off of them. <laughs> It's just nothing but Philly cheese. That's it's how they grease it. Whiz. It's just cheese whiz, cheese whiz on a pole. Oh no! You fall off. You just look like the cheese steak, shredded <laughs> meat on the pavement. Oh. Um, G- our pal Gio from uh, Colorado said, "Have you, how about the tattoo of Messi kissing the World Cup trophy that looks like a big dick?" Oh. Uh, I haven't seen this until just now. I found it. And, Did you find it? Oh my god! It it is terrible looking. Look at this. Oh no! Wow, that's a big dick. That is a dick. <laughs> that is a fucking dong. Now, what do we Jesus think this is? Sad. Is the, did the tattoo artist intentionally do this? Was the tattoo artist terrible at what he was drawing? What I think here? what happened was the tattoo artist intentionally did this drawing, and he's bad at drawing. I think that's what happened. I think he thought it was good. It was a pencils down situation, but right. <laughs> not only that, it's like it's not only is he kissing the dick, he's consoling the dick. Like he's just like it's it'll be okay. Oh dick. man, that is rough. wow. That's a terrible one. Frank Bronson says doesn't even feel bad for the guy with the tattoo. He's like, I feel bad for Messi. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that is just... Oh, it's so bad. The more you look at it, the worse it gets. It's like, what's up with his shirt? It's like his shoulders. Like, why did they put so much detail into his nose? Yeah. Why is they... his one arm all wrinkly? Like, this is a terrible tattoo. That is that is a friend in someone's garage did that for you and put a dick in there. Sir wow. Bob Oliver. Holy shit, that was on purpose. <laughs> like, that. how is that not on purpose? Because I've seen the World Cup trophy. It's not like a, a, a good looking trophy, but it is not a dick. Well, this is what's in the World Cup. It's a fucking jock strap. It's the World Cup. <laughs> and it's just a fucking dick. <laughs> they figured it I out. I kind of want to oh, just do bad. the rest of the that show really with bad. this on the screen. <laughs> no, let's not do that. <laughs> you have right. to stare at it if it's we It's Eric do. Dongle. <laughs> All right. That is, that's rough. Uh, that's a terrible tattoo. Oof. <laughs> oh, real quick. Oh, before we get to segment two. I, I, think I, would want, I prefer the one on my head than the one. <laughs> you rather have the guy's name. Yeah, because at least he spelled it right. Like at, that least spelled spelled correctly. Correctly. at least it doesn't look like he's making out with his like a giant dick. I like, don't know if you it. have that tattoo and you talk about it at a bar and nobody believes you and go like, I'm going to show you a tattoo of a, of me- messy kissing a giant dick and you're going to buy me drinks all night. Oh, you don't. And then you show it. The whole bar goes crazy. And then you're drinking for free all night. Yeah, I guess so. And then you can put your shirt on and go to work the next day. You don't have, you know, yeah, fucking yeah. stupid across your head. So these pictures show up on the internet. They're like, uh, Bob, you have to come to the office. We know you have a... Hey, did you hear about Bob in accounting? Yeah, huge dick on his body. <laughs> huge, yeah. messy dick. Well, you can't fire me because it's co- always covered. You don't see it anywhere exposed while I'm at the workplace. And I kindly thank you for getting off of my Facebook. You stop. <laughs> right. Oh, gross. Uh, s- sir, we didn't see it on your Facebook. It's on Barstool Sports right now. <laughs> it's on the front page. <laughs> right. What All right. Cool. Well, you caught me. What can I do? Can you, could you show it to us? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Here you go. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, button up. Go back to work. Just don't talk about it. Yep, you got it. All right. It's no problem. Yeah, Bob, put your shirt back on. Just wow. Fucking great, right? So good. good stuff. Um, while on, we were on the break... Um, I did a couple of things. One is Christmas Eve. Everyone goes to bed. I'm putting presents and stuff out and killing some time. The fireplace is still going, so I don't want to put it out. I'll just let it, you know, burn. And I go watch TV. I don't know what to watch. And usually my go-to is I'll just put on The Simpsons again. But I had Netflix on and I see on the front page because of Christmas a movie I've never seen before. Irving Berlin's White Christmas. Mm. And I said, okay, this could be interesting. Let me uh, see what this is all about. So I turn it on, and this is on the screen. And that's not what was on the screen. <laughs> I just wanted, I love bringing that tattoo up again. Um, so I put it on, and I'm thinking, I, I don't know anything about the movie. It stars Bing Crosby and Danny Kaye. It's from, you know, 
a century ago. And I thought, oh, maybe this is the movie where the song originated from. And they, the song's in the movie. <laughs> but apparently, that's not the case. When I was reading up on it, it's from a, another movie where that song comes from. But anyway, I'm already 20 minutes into this movie, so I'm going to see it through. And I start to realize... When people are complaining right now about how long movies are, if you look at movies past a certain year, like going backwards, they're really long. Gone with the Wind is almost four hours long. With an intermission, yeah. Yeah. And so this movie was two and a half hours long. And I'm watching it and there's, you know, there's, um, it starts in New York City and then they wind up going to uh, uh, around the country with this uh, Vegas style kind of act. And then they wind up getting on a train and going to Vermont. And then the rest of the movies at, at a lodge in Vermont. And the train scenes looked really nice. The the uh, the the resort scene looks great. Like everything looks amazing for the sets and how they did everything. There's so many fucking dance numbers in these old movies that just go on. Like there's a five minute dance number. And they're, like you're hearing music play and then it's just long, obnoxious dancing. And I, I was like, imagine being in the theater, sitting there watching this shit. Like, it's like, what, what's with the fucking dance scenes all the time? There's nothing needed. You don't need it as part of the story. Now, granted, we're going back to a time where they didn't have much entertainment. So this is all you got. Going to the movie was like when you would take a flight. They would wear a suit, you know, to go on the plane. Yeah, you get dressed up. It was an event. Like, two and a half yeah. hours. It was just like, all right, this is going to be a good that portion was like, of my it day. It was almost like a Broadway show you were going to. Yeah, and so the the dance numbers were terrible. The dialogue was funny in the sense of um, Bing Crosby, big Hollywood star, doesn't give a shit about Hollywood because around that time everybody's talking like this. See, you know, it's like gotta go 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 yeah, to Jr. We gotta go. Find hey, look at that! Ste- uh, look at those pair of stems walking into the room here. Like they're talking like that. Nobody ever talks like that except that period of Hollywood. Hollywood talks like that in the movies. I talk like that all. Bing, these people come in. It's like, what are you going to go, Dave? You got to come over here. I don't really know. I'll figure it out. Like, he just doesn't give a shit. So that was kind of nice that he speaks in his regular voice, very low, doesn't give a fuck attitude in the oh, as the movie's going. Yeah. I enjoyed it. That cadence of that, hey, what's going on, guys? You know, that kind of thing. Because then the see? women do it, too. Like, he, he was introduced to a showgirl or something. He had no interest. He's like, hello. And she goes... He's like, hello, how are you doing? And she goes, mutual, I'm sure, which apparently is a big buzz um, catchphrase from this movie. Like, there's T-shirts and all this other shit out there. Where I've heard it other places. Yeah, like in other older movies. Going, like, mutual, mutual, I'm sure. And it's like, it doesn't mean anything. It's like, if you said, I'm nice to meet you, and you go, she goes, mutual, I'm sure, she doesn't know how she fucking feels about meeting you. Like, th- it's just showing how dim they're portraying women in in this movie, right? If I said if someone <laughs> said that to me, I would just be like, okay, and just keep walking. Like that uh, that would be my answer. Be like, all right, this person clearly has been hit on the head. They do not know how to answer a question. I am going to go. Or you but take your finger an and answer. you put it right on their lips and go, shh, and then you walk away. It's like don't talk anymore. I get I why don't. you're there for visual effect. D- 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 get, who gave her lines? You're fired. Shut up, see. So Man. all this is going on. <laughs> and the dialogue, the context of what they're talking about is is really just kind of nothing. But there's a point where they're in the lodge and the girl who has a thing for Bing Crosby goes downstairs because he knows he's working there late through the night and she's going to go to the bar and uh, the, the, the bar restaurant area of the, of the lodge. And she sees Bing there and she's like oh I'm sorry I didn't know somebody was no you were busy I'll go somewhere else no no come hang out we'll do whatever so she says that um, oh I just came down here and I I gotta show you this dialogue because it's it was maddening that nobody and I looked up nobody ever complained about this line in the movie nobody even references it except for me And this is the thing that pissed me off the most in the movie. And this is nothing to be upset about. This is nothing anyone else would have a problem with. I can't wait to see what this is. I feel like it's going to be something completely innocuous. There's going to be like, hey, what's up? And Harrison be like, I was way too much for me. Good afternoon. All right. This is how it started. And I put the closed caption on so I could take some screenshots so you could see what the text is, right? This is what she started the conversation with. 
Well, I heard something about sandwiches and buttermilk. Nice. I, oh, that no, not line. nice. I like where this is going. It's disgusting. <laughs> Back in these time periods, they're all obsessed with fucking buttermilk. Who's fucking buttermilk? I don't know, but somebody... Well, sandwiches and buttermilk was a vaudeville act, so... Somebody, back in the days of Big Buttermilk, was, uh, you know, influencing the movies and television and, and ad and print. All oh, Big Buttermilk. The buttermilk huh? was supposed to be the big, fancy drink of the time. It's like, oh, I'd like some sandwiches. You ever drink buttermilk? Oh, no, it's thick. disgusting. It's disgusting, but they were pouring it by the cold glass full. Of I mean, they were actually just drinking it. Like the only person I know who drank it, my dad would drink like a cold glass of buttermilk. And I was like, "You're fucking insane!" The, like, what are you? The only doing? person I knew, and we did it on the show, was Sam Roberts's dad. He would eat that in a raw potato. Oh, That's yeah, and he called it one of the greatest treats Sam of all time. Nuggets yeah, Sam's, Sam's food nuggets. palate is, can, you know, is a bag of shit too. But <laughs> well, well, if that if his dad was just eating a raw potato and buttermilk, that yeah, makes sense. Yeah, and, and he eats like liver and onions or or so, I forgot what the rest of the food was that he was he doing. And he's a, look, he's a Mr. Roberts, very nice guy. I've met him so many times and talked with him. Very nice guy. But we were all goofing on him for the fact that they, he loves buttermilk. He drinks cold buttermilk. That was my first exposure to anybody drinking that. The only time I knew buttermilk was when it was part of a recipe or like with Hidden right. Valley Ranch or something, right? Yeah. So he would a drink barf it. in the chat says his dad makes his own and drinks it. Ew. I'm so Gross. sorry. I am so sorry for that. Um, so then... I started seeing it in a lot of these old properties. I just finished um, Boardwalk Empire. There's a scene Buttermilk with Empire, yeah, not Buttermilk Empire. That's the <laughs> other show. Boardwalk Empire. Maybe that's the title. I don't know. Um, Michael Shannon's character, who's um, an IRS agent at the time, takes his wife to a steakhouse, and they go and they're having steak for their anniversary. And, and this is during the time of prohibition. And so the maitre d walks over. It's like, oh, I heard you're celebrating. And then he kind of leans in and goes, you know, we have some. He's talking about some fancy wines or champagne or something, if like that. He's like, uh, no. He's like, uh, no, no. We're 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 good right now. And it's like, my wife will have a cup of. Uh, this is what he orders. He orders a um, uh, New York strip. And he orders her the mutton chops, right? Okay. Which I guess is lamb, right? Goat. Goat? Okay. Goat, usually. He you goes, had a good MLT where the mutton is thin sliced and the tomatoes? Oh, so good. So good. Oh. Love an MLT. So she's having mutton <laughs> chops. And then he's so then he's he's like, oh, let me tell you about our you know the drinks that we can get you. And he goes, no, that's all right. He goes, my wife will have a cup of black coffee and I'll have a nice cold glass of buttermilk. And I'm sitting there. I go, you're having steak at a fancy steakhouse and you're gonna drink fucking buttermilk. I'm tired of seeing this shit. Look, it's not in every day. I know. I'm looking for these old things, but it keeps coming up in these old properties about fucking buttermilk, not fucking buttermilk, but drinking buttermilk, and. It's so gross. So then this thing shows up, right? So again, here we are. Irving Berlin's White Christmas, the movie. It said, well, I heard something about sandwiches and buttermilk. Disgusting. Okay. Now, there's talking. They're kind of flirting back and forth. And then there's some dialogue about um, Bing Crosby comparing women to liverwurst sandwiches. And then this comes up, and she's like, "What? What about liverwurst?" He's like, "I dream about liverwurst." And like, he, like this is some kind of sexual innuendo that they're talking about women being liverwurst sandwiches. And I'm sitting there reading this. I go, "What kind of movie is this? This is supposed to be like schlock. This is supposed to be a a." I mean, uh, song. the dialogue sounds pretty schlocky. It is. I mean, yeah. But I was just like, is he pouring buttermilk out of that giant yes. like, Ming vase? Yes, that's exactly <laughs> what he's doing an 18th century Ming vase full of buttermilk. <laughs> yeah. He pulled that out of the refrigerator. Oh my God. It was in a pitcher like this and he's pouring it into like, you know, um, uh, and that's not even a liverwurst sandwich. Glasses that's a cheese or whatever. sandwich with an olive in it. Like that is the stereotypical like cartoon sandwich with an olive on it. Yeah. But not only that, like when you zoom in, it looks like a Norman Rockwell painting because it's like colored like all too brightly. It's like the right. Panavision. Right. Right. And I just don't. Oh, too funny. I, I I don't get this. So I know it's another time, but nobody was speaking like this. And the fact that he's doing sexual innuendos about how women are liverwurst sandwiches, I was like, <laughs> look, at least that's clever. Somebody snuck that in. It's the worst metaphor, but it's. Right. I like where it was going. 
I want to see Eric get in a time machine, go back to like 1920s New York, and everyone is just drinking buttermilk and eating liverwurst sandwiches and breaking into song and dance. Slapping it like, out of their hands. And he's just like, fuck. They do do this. It's like, don't like, even get me started on watercress sandwiches, and he's just going to be mad. Ugh. Well, done with the watercress. It's funny Are that you say that. Getting drunk? Because um, we are going to be launching when we're ready to launch the YouTube Premium. There is a new specialty series that's, Creamy, that yum. is coming. Uh, Jordan knows milk. about it, and I, I ran the concept past him, and and uh, it was a big what, thumbs up me? from him. You were ask Josh. You've been working, so you know you weren't up at two, three in the morning when I, <laughs> oh, these brilliant ideas hit me, like the idea last night where I was going to say, "Oh my god!" <laughs> you want to tell him? Yeah. So Eric messages me. It must have been at first he messages me. It must have been close to one o'clock my time. So it's three o'clock on the East Coast. Are you up? So I'm like, ew, gross. And then uh, (laughs) and uh, so he's like, hey, what are you doing? You know, I just needed to test some lighting, stuff like that. And, you know, he likes to bounce those kinds of things off me because I'm usually up a little bit later because I'm on the West. Coast. Oh, yeah. That's because I'm not. I'm (laughs) working now. Eric used to be the he would like paint that stuff off me all the time. Yeah, right. you're like, not you're up asleep. anymore. So yeah. <laughs> you're dreaming of uh, liverwurst sandwiches and I'm up every you know, day of my life. Midnight. So then he's like, here, uh, hey, can you get on real quick? I want to test something. This is like two in the morning. And then he, you know, does his Delaware bit. And I'm like, really? Well, and then, he goes, yeah, I just, I, this was the vehicle to get you to I took a screenshot. Uh, get on so I could run this bit on you. I took a <laughs> screenshot was- of, the, of the background and I was testing the new green screen. And I'm sitting there like like this, so you can't tell that the green screen's on because it's got the background. And then we're talking, and then I segued it into Delaware, and I did the the Wayne's World bit. And he's just looking at me, and I go, I'm "I know like, he." Funny. And he was making his lunch lunches for his kids for school as he was trying to get to bed. It was really late, and I still disrupted him to make a really bad Wayne's World joke. It was worth it. It yeah. was pretty funny. I'm just like, all right, it's uh, it's probably 1 30 almost 2 in the morning my time I, you know, i'm tired i want to go to bed it's 4 a.m and he wants to run a delaware joke on me and i'm like oh, that's pretty funny delaware. yeah like that <laughs> so like, uh, giddles anyway. is like i'm glad i'm asleep very good. <laughs> uh i i watched that movie and then a few days later i decided to watch another movie it's a movie i've heard about forever i've never watched it and uh i will show some respect to it because it did um there's a there's a a ton of very famous songs that come from this movie and it influ one of the songs influenced conan o'brien for writing the monorail on the simpsons right it's a movie called the music man and there's a song in that movie called Isn't you got trouble on the, like the the musical like the broadway show music man or was which one was first the the uh it was ri- it was a story written in 1957 and then the movie came out in 62 gotcha. around there and then all the musical stuff came out after that so the all this music and stuff was made for the movie and you know like uh 20 uh something like 20 trombones come walk in da, 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 and like that yeah there's a lot you hear all the songs in this movie and you go oh yeah you know this song so there's a song called you got trouble in there and that song was the inspiration for right uh for the monorail song on the simpsons so i was like all right you know what i should at least watch this and, and give it a go another two and a half hour movie <laughs> another whole thing where everybody's talking like this yeah you, you see like that it's like it's like it's like, what about your son? You know, is, is he being moral? And it's like, does he leave from school and then drops his knickerbockers lower below the knee? And they're like, oh, my God. Like, it's all this terminology and talking that they're all outraged. And I go, none of this makes any fucking sense. So songs, a lot of songs. It's a musical movie. There's a lot of dance numbers that just go on way too long, like Shaboopy, which I know is the, the, a lot of people only know it from Family Guy. But it was from here. It's a long, played out dance scene. That number ends, and the lead character, uh, Professor Harold Hill, talks to the music teacher of the of the town. Uh, music teacher? No, librarian, and music teacher. I guess, I guess she's both. Um, played by Shirley Jones. You know who she is? Yeah, sure. Okay, Giddles doesn't. Shirley Jones. She's the mom <laughs> in the Partridge Family. You may know her from that. The one with the pear tree. That's the one. Correct. So anyway, she's in this here. 
Ron Howard's first acting role is in this movie. He plays a little wow. kid named Winthrop. And oh. uh, he, he talks like he talks like he's Sylvester the cat, you know, in this thing. So I don't know if he lifted the impersonation off of Mel Blanc or Mel Blanc lifted off of him. I don't know who who got it first. But anyway, so there's a scene after the sh- big Shibupi dance thing where the, Stop Shibupi. Shibupi, the girl that you will win her yet, I think. He says, he's like, hey, you're going to meet me. Like, he's, this is where older movies get a little aggressive, maybe a little rapey, if you will, where they're like, he, like they grab the woman's arm. And it's like, you promise you're going to come meet me in 15 minutes, right? It's like, you're going to meet me over there at the park by the, the foot walking bridge or something. It was some weird terminology, like the foot walking bridge. Like, that's where people go to experience their first kiss. And, you know, that means you're courting. You're Let's like, make out oh, hell. Fuck small towns and all these people. <laughs> anyway. So they're talking about this and he's like, you're going to come meet me. Right. And she says, no, she can't because she made a promise to do something else. Now, the dialogue she says in this movie pissed me off, too. And I'm starting to see another comparison that I'm getting really mad when it's food based dialogue in in these movies. When you told me this one and you showed me this one, I'm actually I think I'm upset about it, too, because I don't I still right now to this day don't know what they mean. by. I don't know what they mean either. And I looked it up and I'll explain in a second. So here's the scene of and she's explaining why she can't come meet the guy. Ready here on the the closed caption says, oh, no, no, I'll come. But I promised mother and Winthrop to have a plate of cream with them. I couldn't, I had to pause this and watch it three or four times. I don't know what a plate of cream is. So right. I'm thinking. Do you watch a lot of porn, Eric? I'm sure you can figure it out. <laughs> no, that's a pie of cream. I'm talking a plate of cream. Here. So oh, I'm like, man. all right, did th- is this a terminology, an old terminology for ice cream? Is this, uh, you know how in the Midwest sometimes they would make like whipped cream pies kind of thing? Is it, it one of those things? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I went and looked it up. I was looking up the history. There's no definition for a plate of cream. No reference. Nothing. Whatsoever. There's no old terminology. It doesn't even list this movie as being the origins of, of this term. There's Almost, no. Like, is it like a like a creme brulee type thing, like a pudding? No one I don't knows. Because when you do like a uh, plate of cream, you literally get a search engine result with just cream colored <laughs> plates, like, and you can't find anything. Like he said, it's not some kind of terminology. Wasn't some kind of saying back then. I don't. I, I. I was confused. I'm like, is that ice cream? Why is it on a plate? And I just started getting mad when he. What, 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 what is the name of this movie, Eric? The Music oh, the Man. The Music Man. Very famous movie. The the Broadway production just closed. That was starring Hugh Jackman. Uh, just closed uh, by the. Uh, oh yeah. As the year ended, so I'm looking all around. I don't know what a fucking plate of cream is, and it could it could be anything. You right. So watching that. And then seeing dialogue like this, I'm like, this drives me nuts more than the people talking like this. See, when you got to do that and this and that, like where they're talking to those things. I get that was some bullshit Hollywood mentality that they thought had to be. That was acting. You couldn't use your real voice. But it's the, an actual accent. It's, it's called a mid-Atlantic accent. Like Catherine Hepburn was like the most notorious for it. <laughs> but she's it's from like, that uh, old time of Hollywood. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's how they it's like it. It started, I think, with radio, like to, to because to be able to hear your voice. And I don't know. I've voice heard some really radio old, old radio programs, and I didn't hear people talking like that. Oh, yeah. I, I used to listen. I still listen to The Shadow from like the 1930s and 40s. And, Sirius yeah, XM they don't had talk an like old time radio. Ch- I don't know if they still have it, but they used to have an old time radio classics channel where they would play a lot of those old serials or uh, Amos right, and like Andy, Lone and Burns and Allen and, you know, um, those kind of things, old game shows that were brought to you uh-huh. by Pepsodent, you know, th- those kind of things. Blue Coal. Yeah. So, going through the whole movie, the dialogue is atrocious. The opening scene almost made me stop watching the movie. And apparently, <laughs> it's, it's one of the most in. famous scenes in the movie. It's They're in the train, and it's all these salesmen on a train, and then the train's, you know, there's a rhythm to it. It's bouncing around and they're all talking like this with the beat, with the beat, with the beat, with the beat. I don't know where I'm going. Where are you going? Where are you going? Like they're doing all that shit, right? Dumb theater shit. Theater people love oh, this stuff, right? Theater people. Right? So we were friends with so many of them. <laughs> they were all idiots. <laughs> yeah, they were all pretty bad. So they're, they're going through and the people know this scene and it, it's a very beloved scene. It's terrible. It's And I'm like, this is the worst scene in the movie. Now that dropped to number two once this plate of cream thing came around because I couldn't get it out of my head. I'm like, that is fucking terrible. But that is an earworm 
that is not going to leave because I need to know what a plate of cream is, right? So that happens. I looked at plate of cream, and now this opening scene is playing. Now I'm watching it. <laughs> the train? It's, ter- it's terrible. Yeah, right? You, you see what I'm talking about there, right? So there is one redeeming quality outside of the music. I'll give a lot of respect is to the, the train music. crash. I wish, but no, maybe it runs over an orphan or something. <laughs> but like, I give a lot of respect to it for the music. There's a lot of famous music that comes from it. And I, I you know, all respect to that. There's a character in this, <laughs> in this movie. She's the wife of the mayor. Her name is Mrs. Shin. Now, she is ridiculous. Her accent is ridiculous. Her cadence is ridiculous. Her demeanor and her outfits are all equally ridiculous. Like she's just complicated for no reason, right? She's she's pompacity personified. Yeah, yeah. She has the accent of like upper crust, but it's at a small town. She's like this uh, kind of. Real quick, David Chandler in the chat and saying we've lost Giddles. He's hooked because he's not watching this. Oh, he's not paying attention. <laughs> he's to watching, he's music, watching that horrible train scene, right? You're well, because they're all on this train that's clearly not moving, and they're all just going like this, like yeah. to pretend yeah. it's moving. While yeah, it's I'm, I'm trying to think of like <laughs> when was green screen technology invented? Because that's clearly not what they're looking at outside the window. No, they used and to have I'm, the the. No, white it was on a real film. And it was remember like, they'd have yeah. a projector on the white screen, and that would be what would yeah, be but behind like them. the way that it is it doesn't look like it's it's the screen the only thing i could think of is it's, it's like, it's like on a, wrong it's on a it's like on a loop and it's like a matte painting or something yeah. like it's it's just that like just like that so Oof. yes you, like a bunch you, of amish people on a train you see how terrible that train <laughs> scene is right he's so upset uh, now. so back to mrs horrible shin. so mrs shin talks with another fake accent which is supposed to be a combination of, of like pompously rich and overly sophisticated together yeah. Oh, yeah. right but in any other movie if somebody came in there and talked to you like this you'd be like oh what a cunt I'd you know, like, punch you, him in the face right you wouldn't want to deal with it but in this movie the fact that she's doing it while everyone else is being ridiculous you're like I like her she's like yeah. comic relief in this Eric's dabbing sorry I was yeah. dabbing Eric's like, I love this movie so much <laughs> Giddles is watching it. You're dabbing. I'm just like, I'm Shaboopy. out. Check it out. Yeah, you know. Shaboopy. So uh, she comes in. She talks. And now this scene I'm going to show you here. She's in the library. Don't show me more scenes. Which, no, you're going to like this one. Here. Is it? Like she comes in and she's upset like with this book. <laughs> now you got to remember, this is like turn of the century. Like this is in the yeah, tens. Let's turn to a new century. In the te- 1910s, 1920 maybe, somewhere in there. And she comes in about this book that her daughter was reading, and she's upset with the book. One, I'm going to point out, listen to why she's upset with the book, because her reasoning is hilarious. And then two, what she thinks of the book is even more hilarious than the reasoning of the book. Not enough shibupi. And I've been I saying it for an entire week. And I, you were too? All right. Yeah, after you showed it. I was, like, I was well, repeating hilarious. this lady's cadence and dialogue for days because it was so catchy. Take a listen to this. It's dirty Persian poetry. I love her hat. Are people lying out her. in the woods eating salmon. You can't hear that? No. Oh, shit. All right. Hold on a second. <laughs> Sorry about Is that. Is it because it was muted? No, it wasn't muted. It was playing. <laughs> uh, hold on. Oh. I think it was muted to you. Apologies. So the, accent, the accent she has, um, you see it a lot in like the old Marx Brothers movies. Right. Because like, I love watching the old Marx Brothers. And when you ever you get like the highbrow ladies, it's that same but, accent. But they're supposed to be because they're supposed right. to be um, uh, pretentious yes. or they're supposed to be villainous. Like they're meant, they're designed that way, the women in the Marx Brothers movies, to show that they're a foil in some way. Like they're the straight yeah. guy to the Marx Brothers craziness kind of thing. Yeah. This was just comic relief in a really uptight, stuffy story. Uh, let's try it again here and see if this works. It's dirty Persian poetry. People lying out in the woods eating sandwiches, getting drunk with pitfall and with gin, drinking directly out of jugs with innocent young girls. No daughter of mine Mrs. is ever- Shin, the ruby out of Omar Khayyam is a classic. It's a smutty book. I love that line. It's a smutty book. It's a smutty book. It's a smutty book. Yeah. I was saying that for days. Anytime someone come up, because you got to do that that thing at the beginning. It's a smutty book. 
But she's yeah, in there. She's like buck. out there in the middle of the woods, eating sandwiches, drinking, drinking out of jugs, jugs full of gin for impressionable yeah, nice. young girls. You're like, so they're having a picnic. That's the, right. that's what's so obscene. A high school house party. Like what's well, happening here? Yeah. I so I kind of started looking into this movie a little bit. She has the, yeah, the, the biggest hats throughout this entire movie. Yes. It's almost like that joke in, um, I think it was uh, Scary Movie 3, where like the cop like would have a, her hat on, and then in the next scene, her hat was slightly bigger, and it just kept getting bigger throughout the yeah, rest yeah, of the movie. Yeah. It, it's, it's just, it's the same thing. Like, there's another scene where she's got this giant gold hat, and then in that scene, she's wearing this giant purple, you know, pirate hat. <laughs> now it's like, it's insane. Yeah, and, ob- and it's an obvious sight gag, but here they're just saying, this is this, this, this monstrosity's wardrobe. This is what she <laughs> right. wears on the regular. And I got to do it again. I need to hear what kind of book it was. It's a smutty book. Smutty book. It's a smutty you know what book. I think it is? I don't even think it's the way she says it. I think it's the fact that her her eyebrows go like this. Well, and she talks book. out of the like, side of her face. Did you notice that yeah. when she's yeah, talking? She's got stroke she's mouth. Like yeah. And it's, yeah, she's like, just smutty book. More, it's Eric Nagel. It's Eric Nagel. Next. Hey, hey, Mark Normand here. After you're done listening to this episode of It's Eric Nagel, check out Tuesdays with Stories, the podcast I do with old fat Joe List. You know him, Type 2 Mouth. Uh, podcast is a hot one. We've had no one really good on because we like to just do it ourselves. So don't worry about guests. Every time we have guests, the fans hate it. So uh, just tune in to hear about our stories. We open for people on the road, the fucking, the fighting, the anal. It's all a good time. So uh, tune in on iTunes or SoundCloud or Grinder, And uh, subscribe to Tuesdays with Stories podcast on iTunes. Listen to Tuesdays with Stories.com. Praise our love. It's Eric Nagel. Follow the show on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube, and Facebook. At It's Eric Nagel. It's Eric Nagel. It's Eric Nagel. He is back. Segment two, where we update you with television, movie, and streaming news, and uh, pretty much give you the information so you can figure out what you want to watch and what you don't have to watch. Um, besides the two movies, like I said in segment one there that I watched, I also watched season two of Alice in Borderlands. Nice. Fucking fantastic show. Um, they left it. They did something really clever. If, the, if that's the end of it, it's a great ending. But there's also something there, too, that they could open it up for a third season with, uh, with the continuation of the story. So, oh, so maybe they're they're playing into Netflix's game of we don't know if our show is going to be canceled, so maybe we should uh, leave it with an ambiguous ending that can go either way, right? So, so people upset. will be satisfied. Yeah, it and I don't want to give it just came out like a week or two ago, so I don't want to give uh, anything away. But the way they did it was like that's a satisfying ending, and there's also something else that's there that could potentially be a problem if they go into another season. If right. Netflix pulls the plug and said, that's done, you could watch this series and go, I'm satisfied with that. This was good. Which they're not known to do, so I'm assuming we'll get a third season. Well, here's of why course, it might be the way it is. Because Netflix didn't make it, and it's not an American production. It's well, a Japanese well, production. Go. and So look, they're just buying like... Public. Alice in Borderlands season one came out, was a, was a big kind of phenomenon, right? Right, but Squid Game then came out a few years later, uh, and then blew up, like became super huge. So now everybody's willing to. Squid Games was like Korean, right? <clears throat> yeah, Squid Games was Korean. Yeah. Borderlands Japanese, but people were more willing to give Asian import um, entertainment a, a go now, a try. Parasite did very well. That was a Korean movie, um, and 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 did gangbusters for the box office and awards and all this stuff so people were more like all right let's see what else is coming out of asia there we're more willing to to watch this stuff season two came out it's brutal and fantastic at the same time it it was really well done so i can't recommend that enough if you're looking for something new uh alice in borderlands it's on netflix you can go watch season one and two back to back and enjoy it uh follow me in the chat i started season one of alice in borderlands it's pretty neat so far i am glad you like it um there's very few shows i would say tell other people to watch 
We had to stop doing that with 1899 because Netflix Ugh. just canceled it. But uh, Jordan said that you were hearing something that HBO might be looking at it. Um, it might be shopping around, but yeah, right now it's just they, the the creators posted something saying that they're, they're right now they're just done. Damn, so we'll see. That was a good show. I, and I knew some people that watched and like I hated it. I said I, I don't think you were paying enough attention. To yeah, it. it's it's weird. I feel like it was just too smart for a lot of people. And I'm not trying to like insult vast groups of people for just not being able to understand it. But it was just it was very high was just, concept, high there. you know, like high intelligence sci fi. And right. it's that's hard to translate. And apparently, it just didn't work. Which oh, is weird because they did dark, and dark got three seasons. And if you were willing to bet that. You, they were going to create something on that same level, yeah, and not at least give them a second season. It just doesn't make sense, especially and I still since, have not seen one concrete reason why Netflix did it. Especially since, like, uh, they said that it was going to be a three season run. Like, just at let least. them have the three seasons. Let them finish the fucking story. Like, I don't get it. Like, same thing with OA. Like the OA, I didn't watch. But they had two canceled. or three seasons, right? Didn't OA? There's two two seasons of the OA, but season two had one of the biggest cliffhangers like ever like it was right. just genre changing cliffhanger at the end of season two aren't they making a movie though to kind of wrap that story up no they're the what creators are doing another show the people who no, they don't the talk OA, to each other like, it's been 10 years well the oa subreddit has just devolved into people being like he, it's coming back isn't it it's like no it's santa's I thought not they real. banned like, the oa subreddit happening. I mean, uh, that's a different one that's the, the wood floor subreddit oh. that one's going through yeah <laughs> gotcha uh but yeah, I haven't. The only thing I saw was somebody was posting um, an article that basically said that when a new person came into Netflix in 2020, they kind of took it over and tried to make it more like reality, like quick, quick, like production stuff. They, as they said, the Walmart, uh, mall, the Walmarting of Netflix is what they kind of did to it, and that if a show gets canceled or something like that within a first, the first certain amount of weeks then they don't have to pay royalties to people and that stuff. so that it might have been something like that if I they, don't if know. they own it like a lot of the times some of these um streaming properties are licensing from the production companies to have it exclusive on their streaming service um so they they don't have full ownership of it so that if they cancel the show like we're not looking to pay for this anymore then uh, the rights res- uh, go back at a certain point to the uh, producers, the owners of the of the property, and they can go continue it on their own or shop it somewhere else or whatever they want to do. Um, but I think some of these properties that Netflix is canceling, Netflix was funding these shows, so they kind of yeah. have the ownership over it. But Netflix, like, but Netflix will put on the stupidest shit and give it a million seasons. But like something you know that's out there, that's you know a. A different concept or something that you know it might take a little while to like get like they they just they just cancel it and it's just sad like i i i guarantee you if breaking bad premiered on netflix it would have been canceled after season one without a doubt they would be like the show is not going anywhere it's kind of boring i don't you know i just i don't think it would have lasted well and you got to think like shows like uh sandman Great first season, real real strong. You had Neil Gaiman begging people to keep watching because that's another one where people were holding off and saying, well, I'm going to watch it over time. I don't want to burn out on it so quickly. And he's like, no, you have to binge the entire first season within like the first week. Yeah. And then yeah, that way Netflix better. respects the numbers because after that, they don't care. Well, Sam was Amazon, I believe, right? No, no it was, that was a, Netflix. It was Netflix. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. And they just barely got a second season renewal. Like it took a while for them to announce something. And this was a a, a great show, good cast, good writing. Like, and it did you know. decent numbers. Like it didn't do terrible. Like it was right. like it was huge internationally. Well, right. the problem is that they released eighteen ninety nine, and then a week later they released Wednesday. So I mean, but they're Wednesday, they're, like, they're bunching Wednesday up was- really smart properties back to back. You're gonna have that happen, and people are gonna. But I feel like Wednesday, like five minutes into the premiere, they were like, "All right, season two is coming." Like they didn't. Their like, numbers they, like, were just- so high. Right for that, it hit a threshold, whatever it is that but they, they also go. Put, but they also put a lot of money into marketing that. You know what I mean? They didn't. But Netflix put money doesn't into own marketing. it though. 
Well, then, but then at that point, then what you're saying is whatever production company can put the most money into marketing to get their shit out there to like get all this hype for a season two, they'll, they're the ones who get the season two. And the people who spend all their money to, to make a show with a decent budget, like they don't. They're, Wednesday they're might a be a little different situation because the rights to Adam's family is under MGM and MGM is right. owned by Amazon. So that deal was made. And the fact that Wednesday did so well. Part of it could have been, well, we don't want this to revert back to Amazon. If we don't pick it up for a second season, then Amazon takes it and then puts it on their uh, their service. And they've Bezos doesn't give a shit because the video stuff doesn't mean anything or it doesn't mean a lot to the, the bottom line of Amazon. So right. he can throw all this money on properties just to keep people happy for shows that aren't having a big return because that's not where they're making their money. They're making it from other things. So that could have been part of the decision why Netflix decided to renew it. One, that the numbers were through the roof, but two, that it's like, well, if we don't do it, this is going to go over to Amazon. And if it becomes really big after this initial uh, first week, then, you know, as far as like, you know, like a lot of merchandising is, is happening going into Hot Topic and, and oh, uh, sure. box lunch and, and <laughs> stores like that, that uh, this is a lot of money. That they could be walking away from if they didn't renew it. Like nobody was really clamoring for eighteen ninety nine merch, or you know, Stranger Things sells a ton of merchandise outside of what it does for ratings wise for Netflix. No, yeah, well, no one's doing like eighteen ninety nine, you know, TikTok dances and shit like that. Either. <laughs> yeah, no, they're doing the TikToks, but they're throwing little boys over the railing. You know what? That would have that would have went. <laughs> No, would be like, have you guys seen the new challenge that's sweeping just the throwing kids Throw over rails. overboard? <laughs> and it didn't take didn't take off as well as the uh, Wednesday like, dancing know, scenes. I think the thing that's the most disappointing about it is that they made a one hour making of for this show. Like, who great. spends the money to make to to a, a one hour making of show that you're gonna cancel? The production, like, what the, the fuck? production company yeah. did that company, uh, <laughs> that couple that has they look, they had the the writing, the directing, the producing, they had all of that stuff. Right. Netflix was just the the people who were funding this for them, so <clears throat> they had the money. They shot about, everything like, while they were doing it. So really, doing a behind the scenes thing is not that much of an extra cost, right. which is why a lot of uh, a lot of properties <laughs> do that. But if Netflix does like doesn't want to pay for another season because that show may have been too costly based on the people who were actually watching it, then, you know, what can you do? They move it to somewhere else and hopefully HBO picks it up. But uh, But like I said, I mean, they gave them three seasons of dark. They had a good track record. It doesn't make sense. It's not like this was a new thing that they, you know, they didn't know these guys. They didn't know the quality of work that they would put out and how it could, you know, get legs and grow and, and, and get better over, you know, a season or three. Right. Um, they just they canceled it and it's just it's it puts no faith into wanting to watch any new programming no new shows new anything because you, you know you're not you don't you're not guaranteed i mean i understand even with you know traditional television you weren't guaranteed more than shit i mean six episodes before they cancel the season of something but right i mean when you're into this new era of streaming media and things like that, you would think if you're going to end it on a cliffhanger, you would have to have that kind of guarantee almost that you have at least that, that contract to get your story out. And it sucks because this was a good show. Yeah. Um, it was really fun. It was, it was creative. Like, yeah, there was like some things that, you know, people have been doing a lot of in television or re- yeah. storytelling recently about, you know, what, what is reality and blah, blah, blah. I, I get that. But it was a good show. It was well done. It was well written. Uh, I enjoyed the characters. I thought like the music was great in it. Like maybe the music budget put them over. Who the fuck knows? Uh, but it's just, it just, it just really sucks. And like, because you guys know me, I don't watch new shit. And the reason why oh, I, don't I watch know. new shit is because of this. And like, I get hooked on something, and then it gets fucking canceled. And like, I'm tired of it. I am tired of putting time and energy of eight hours of one day into these things and like just having it just be like, no, we're not going to tell you any more about that. Just imagine what it was. And it's not like it, it, it's not like it was a satisfying ending either. Like it was a cliffhanger, you know, like we don't know where the ending was. Yeah. It was was too open-ended to be too too open-ended. But follow me in the chat saying, uh, don't know about cancellations after one season, but I read somewhere that if the second and third seasons don't increase viewership, even if it maintains its previous season's numbers, it's considered a failure. 
But then give us season two and let us try it. They canceled it before season two. Can you can you imagine if like there's nothing good on network television right now? And I'm not just throwing a blanket statement out there because oh networks suck. But there really isn't. It's a lot of cost effective programming on there. It's bad game it's shows, it's get reality. bad reality shows. Or and every drama is a pop drama, an ambulance drama, a lawyer drama. That's what I'm like, all a lot of five, five main industries. What you know? they spent their money on, like, yeah, you've got two or three different Law and Order stuff. There's a, a Chicago trilogy. One's police, fire department, EMT. Then there's this 911 series that's on Fox because one's in LA and one's in Texas. Yeah, one's so, in Texas with Rob Lowe. So that they're spending their money on on those kind of dramas because, look, our parents are still watching those things. Younger people aren't they not watching. That I know, they but they're not it. watching that stuff. The game shows, the the fanfare, all that. that that's the trailer we watched before we went to break. The Wheel, which is like oh. Trivia Pursuit meets uh, Who Wants to Beat uh, be, Who Wants to Beat a Millionaire. That's <laughs> could you imagine? I'd watch that. But who wants to meet? Wants to go kick Bezos' ass? Not even and meet a millionaire. Who wants to be a? Mil- I'm, whatever you get it um it was that kind of show and they're terrible it's one of those shows where they, they got to give you the thought process of why they're thinking yeah. of this answer and what could this be and let me tell you why i might make this decision because look there's a hundred thousand dollars at play here and you know i could take that money and actually start up the business i wanted to talk about or maybe we could you know fix Susie's legs so she could go to school <laughs> like a real girl you know it's those kind of things and you're like i don't give a fuck about your life Play the game, get it done. It's done in 10 minutes. In a half hour, you could have three episodes done. Just get rid of the fucking banter. Look, did you win? Great. Congratulations. Did you lose? No. Congratulations. You know, get off the set. Watch the watch America's Got Talent. Uh, no, Giddle's worked on America's Got Talent. Watch that. Watch um, The Voice. Watch, uh, what else did they bring back? I think uh, they're American, bringing back X Factor. Yeah, I heard like that was coming too. But things, watch like- those shows, right? The big buildup. You start following certain people through the whole process of the season. Then you get to the live shows. And then you get through the, the, the elimination rounds and the qualifying rounds and you get down to the final round and you're invested in in like who's the talent that you're rooting for right. are you texting and voting and all this stuff it's like it, it's like in-game purchasing it's all just a waste of your money to go and vote for these stupid shows but you get to the end what happens they build it all up there's other special performances by celebrities or past winners or whatever for that final another episode another contestant comes out with a chair and just starts hitting them right you know it, and then at the very end they do, they're down to two people and they're like the winner is and then it's 30 seconds of them just cutting to shots of people around the room <laughs> stressing like trying to figure out what's going on and then they go it's this guy oh, you know gold confetti's coming down lights are going crazy everyone's going nuts and then the guy's celebrating. He goes like this. Oh, my God, I won. And then it cuts to the host. Thank you, everybody, for a great season. We'll see you next yep. season for season 24 of America's Got Talent. Then it's a Which wide shot like three weeks. of the confetti and everything else going down. And then it's done. The guy yeah, spent no, it out of there. The guy spent the entire season competing. You don't get to talk to him of how he feels, what he's going to do next. What a, nothing. It's like, oh, he won. Great. See you later. Bye. It's all within a minute. And they're done. Where do you know too much about him? We're they done with don't him. give a shit. And why should you? But fucking idiots just turn on the TV thinking I'll just sit here and watch this because it's on and but I'm getting back to the point imagine if networks had this like look you know this sitcom was doing great but you know we lost a little in season two they wouldn't push it forward to get a season three with all the advertising and like look we may right. not have a hundred million people watching but we still have about 80 million people watching and that's not good enough anymore so we're gonna have to cancel that and find something new and start over again networks would be off the air now streaming doesn't matter because they don't need to be live they're not there their their content is on demand you watch it whenever the fuck you want to watch it but that mentality's kind of got has to go now with the streaming services hbo's all fucked up for a different reason and that's because of the discovery warner um merger but that that thing's going away in june may or june hbo max is going away and it's Mm going to be a new service Netflix is fucking up big time. This is the chance where HBO and, and Disney Plus, right out of the gate, despite what you hear about their numbers and, and finances and all that stuff, people were watching HBO Max. People were watching Dis- uh, Disney Plus. I said Discovery Plus, but I meant Disney Plus. There's people watching those programs still. They're, they're right. using those two services. But HBO's falling apart. They're pulling more of their content off of there. And this was a chance for Netflix to come out with new and better things. And in a couple of shows, they did. But all the other stuff, like, nope, not working. Pull it off. We need, Everything has to be a hit or they can't waste their time with it. And that's going to kill them. In, 
that's going to kill them in the end. Like you said, the, uh, the blockbuster show that they put oh. out there. The blockbuster show was like the, the gall of them developing a show about bl- the end of blockbuster when it was Netflix that killed blockbuster. Mm-hmm. And now they killed off that show again. To right. kill was there OJ if I did it book? That's what it was. That <laughs> yes. was that, that's what it was. This is how we killed them. <laughs> yeah. So they kill off blockbuster and now Netflix is looking to be killed off by some of these other things. I Just think they're finding that the the release everything all at once method is no longer viable. Right. Because you've got things like yeah. Disney Plus releasing an episode a week and it keeps the conversation going. It keeps the people engaged and it keeps people coming back. I just started that new Willow show and I'm all hooked in like I'll watch it and it goes every week. Netflix, if you don't binge the entire first 10 episodes of a season, they consider it a failure in yeah. the first like, you know, a couple days and you just can't do that anymore. People have limited time. You have to let these things have the time to to grow and to breathe and they just they they want the instant stuff. Well, they Especially don't like those like this we, kind of show. It's we, not like a a quick No. A uh, yeah, uh, quick like you know it's gonna catch on to everybody, but I will tell you, every single person I told to watch that show was like, "Thank you for telling me to watch the show." It was fucking awesome. Oh, yeah. you know, yeah. even like my sister, my cousins, like every single person. I told was, a like, bunch of people to watch it too, show. and it was only a couple people that didn't like it, but everyone else was like, "This I didn't even know about this." Yeah, and those are the shows that need to be pushed out there and need to you know have the word of mouth. Just give it a chance to grow, and it can't. Everything can't be an instant blockbuster. I know that's the mentality right now for some of these streaming things in Hollywood, but if it's not an instant blockbuster, no pun, uh, then they, it's like, oh, this has got to go. We got to get the next thing. We got to get the next thing. You're wasting and spending too much money instead of letting it grow like the networks right. used to do. You hear the stories about Cheers. You hear the stories about Seinfeld. They were dead last in their first and second season. You know, I mean, and then I all of a sudden the something clicked. And, the they, first and they, yeah, they, and they, then something clicked and they became. You know, a, a juggernaut for advertising right. revenue and ratings and all that stuff. You got to give some of this shit a chance, and then do more than just pushing it out on on these stupid blogs like IGN and and Nerdist and and uh, AV Club and all that stuff, where it's like, hey, put it out there because Friday morning we talked about this. Friday morning, six a.m. East oh Coast time. God. What the ending to episode three meant, and you go, it just dropped just because you watched yeah. it at three a.m. on the West Coast. Doesn't mean everybody else watched this thing, and you're already saying, "Let me tell you about the hitting, uh, the hitting meaning to the ending of the series." And, and going to YouTube, miss there's when you 17, 17 ending explained videos, which are the worst <laughs> videos on YouTube. It's just like, did you not watch this? Like, if you have to watch an ending explained video, you didn't pay attention. Yeah, my my favorites are the the uh, top ten things you missed in this episode. That is and it's four hours never old. things you missed. <laughs> oh no, it's everything that's obvious. That's what I'm saying. Like, oh yeah, I saw it. Did you see in this episode Rick burps and Morty laughs? Like, wow, I didn't see that. Like, in this episode, who, who Morty burps and Rick laughs. Whoa, uh, fucking yeah. season two plot twist. Uh, Bartholomew is saying, uh, I watched one episode of the blockbuster show just to see the train wreck and train wreck. It was, it was. so boring. I had hopes, and I told Giddles this I had hopes this would be okay because JB Smooth was in it. And I like uh, a lot not- of the stuff he's in. This, he couldn't, they neutered him, he couldn't be JB Smooth. Like you know him from his stand up right. from uh, from um, the Larry, what's the Larry David Harley show? Quinn he's yeah. you know he does all those things Curb Your Enthusiasm space yes. on that second yeah, yeah. he's great in Harley Quinn the animated series funny. he's good in a lot of stuff but they were not letting him they were using his name but not letting him be him and it killed that that show was just fucking I think terrible. I watched two episodes and I just I, I got out. I was about like, I was four bored. or five and then I even stopped I said I, I I can't keep doing this I can't get to the ending of this season it's really really bad Frankie Bronson in the chat the wire was not uh popular but uh there was self-awareness within HBO to keep it going I hope HBO continues that because what a shame mm-hmm. if the wire was never finished despite the numbers the Wire took a little while, and I remember, you know, uh, when we were doing Opie and Anthony, Norton was on the Wire bandwagon early, and he was constantly um, preaching about this show and supporting it. And, and we got the actors on, and, and then it really was blowing up, and we were lucky to get a lot of those actors at the time, right? As like Michael K. Williams and uh, the guy who played um, what's his name, Andre Royo, who played Bubs, and all those yeah. people to come on the show in different capacities and right. as the show was blowing up we got to be a part of why it was blowing up and i mean it launched careers at this point i mean idris elba is like 
He's you know, huge. everywhere now. Yeah. And, you know, no one knew who he was when he was on The Wire. He was stricken I mean, back, right? Was, I, yeah. Yeah. So I watched The Wire. I, I enjoyed The Wire, but... It took me at least ten tries to get through. Season the first. two is terrible. I don't care what. No, I'm talking say. about the first five minutes of the first episode. It took me like ten that to first eleven tries. Amazing, dude. You were. Did you hear what the first five minutes of the first episode? I know. Where they're just sitting on a curb having a boring conversation while nothing is happening. Well, let me tell you about the first five minutes of a movie where they're bouncing up and down on a fake train. You told me about it and I watched it. He watched it. (laughs) Right here, live for everybody. But but, but that's what I'm saying. Like, I gave The Wire multiple chances. And then, like, it finally I got it and I understood why people liked it. But, like... If it was just me on my own watching that, I probably would have not continued to watch it if I didn't know that the rest of it was good because I was not not hooked. Yeah. Well, like I said, the first, the first season of The Office, the 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 American version had six episodes and they didn't think they were getting more. Like yeah. no one was watching, no one cared. And Steve Carell didn't yeah. even have popular. his hairline put in yet. Yeah, he didn't have his hair in. And then uh season 2 hit, got better and everyone loves it. You yeah. know, but it's because NBC said, you know what? Let's just keep going. You know, but and like thing the, went 10 but seasons, the, eight seasons. But the, end, but the last season of The Wire was pretty bad. Yeah. Oh. It wasn't good. Well, apparently, the second season of The Wire was pretty bad. No so. way. The second season was great. One through four <laughs> were great. Season five was not yeah. good. Like, I just, I'm supposed to believe that these cops can't tell that the other cop is pretending to be a serial killer. And, like, the way the news was, it was just so over the top. Like, maybe if I was watching it in the time it came out, it, right. it would have been better. But watching it and looking back now, it's like, I don't know. It's kind of stupid. Uh, the first four seasons are great. Chris uh, in the chat saying um, the HBO show that had the most star power come from it was Oz. Uh, listed yeah. a whole bunch of the cast. We had Chris Maloney, uh, J.K. Simmons, Harold. Pro- You're forgetting Ernie Hudson and I Luke Perry Ernie. being buried in the wall. One of my favorite scenes in that thing. <laughs> um, just to name a few. Show gets overlooked as far as HBO shows go because well you have to have uh, you have to excuse the cock scenes. Yes, and and when. Uh, the shitting scene where that one scene where uh, he pins him down in the weight room and then shits on his face. (laughs) You're like, and then he says, welcome to Oz. And he punches him. And then he does the theme song and like, stop doing the theme song in the show. You're not supposed to know the theme song. He just does a big (laughs) shit and goes, beating him. (laughs) I would watch that too. I'd love those outtakes. It's like the guy just keeps beating people up while singing the Oz theme. (laughs) Doesn't make any sense. All right, we got to finish up here with segment two. We haven't even gotten to the stuff that we needed to talk about. We don't need to because I'm angry. I'm still angry about 1899. I've been so angry for the last couple of days because I just really did not think that that show would well, get canceled. Why don't you I'll go watch it? I know. I posted that in our chat, and Giddles was legitimately like, he's I'm like, are you furious. fucking kidding me? And he's been mad ever since. This was like four so days angry. ago. Because what? like... Because like I said, it takes a lot for me to get in, interested in something. And then when you do, and then they just like, once again, like I put my money on this one thinking, okay, it's the creators of Dark. Dark was a hit show. They're right. only asking for three seasons of this. And they already made one. Like, there's no way that they're not going to do this after what happened to the OA. And they're like, no worse. We're not even giving you two seasons. Canada. We're canceling it like yeah. two weeks after it came out. Like, right. yeah. And I said, and I said that on when we were doing the 1899 recap, I was like, that's lightning in the bottle for Giddles to get into anything that's just now coming out. Oh. Yeah. See what you did to us, Netflix. Now he'll never watch anything new again. You know what I'm going to do, Netflix? I'm going to log out of my sister's account and not borrow it again. <laughs> well, they're going to crack down. They're, they're cracking down on that soon too. Yeah. So, so you're, but you're not you know, be able to by February anything. 1st, they'll just do it for you. So <laughs> yeah. you'll be good to well, go. Good. Right. Good. I didn't want to watch your stupid shows. You're anyway. Like I'm not going to steal content except for Love, Love Death, and Robots. It's and Bob, so right? terrible. Well, I'm not even going to steal it. That's how right. bad it is. Yeah. Uh, moving on, since we had mentioned HBO and Warner Brothers, Warner Brothers is reportedly moving forward with Ezra Miller as the Flash in the new just, direction of the DCU. I just read about this. Everyone, I'm, it's I'm not like a, somebody didn't like the person, so it's split down the middle on a fan base. I like Henry Cavill as Superman, and I don't think this guy's a good Superman. That's just taste. Everyone hates this guy, and with with due reason. This guy yeah, is a piece of shit, everybody. or a guy, them, whatever his <laughs> pronouns are. They hate it. They hate this thing, and good, with good reason for all the shit that this person has done. And they're like, you know what? We might still want to hang around here and keep him 
like, what are you doing at this point? Like, why would you keep this asshole around other than for people just to constantly be hate watching all your shit? I mean, that's going to blow up in your face. My my hesitation with this is that it's all part of the same. Everybody goes, well, reporters on the inside are saying or a guy who knows a guy who knows a guy is saying. And then at this point, if I don't hear it from James Gunn, it doesn't exist. Right. You know what and I mean? That, like, that's the way it should be, come, to be yeah, perfectly and, honest. You know, he's going to be developing a plan. I think Warner Brothers is going to be smart and stay out of his way. And they they're going to make they have good nothing content. else that they can do with this. And I'll tell you this, too. I said this a, many years ago. We have faith in James Gunn that he'll do his best to make this work. Mm. But if it doesn't, I can see Disney buying this as a fire sale for Warner Brothers. I'll get it. A cheap, flash right? sale? Uh. And my theory still holds up that if Disney does buy DC, then there's no, people could say Monopoly, whatever. There's no Monopoly on owning two comic book franchises. There's none. If they buy DC, I guarantee you they use it as a trading tool with Sony to get the rest of their Marvel shit back. And they're like, and they we'll give much. you the entire DC universe right. to get back Spider-Man and these hundred shit characters no one cares about into our control. We'll make you this deal that you can have this and we'll take that. Now, there might be cash and other incentives involved, but you know, coming from Sony, going to Disney, whatever. Disney dollar. But I see that where if Disney gets the DC thing, they use it as a bargaining tool to hand it off to Sony and let them go play in their own... Um, uh, superhero universe so that Disney can have complete control over the Marvel stuff and not have to worry about everything else. Well, we'll see. Just a theory. Just a theory. Uh, moving on still with the DC stuff, this time involving the CW. You know, this is the last year for all DC properties on the CW. I think yep. all that's left is The Flash. Giddles is so mad that uh, he's choking on his own rage about Ezra <laughs> Miller and, and Netflix, so he's going to deal with that for a second. Uh, Stephen Amell is coming back as Green Arrow for the last I season of the, Fla uh, the Flash. It's their ninth and final season, which is going to air on the CW. Now, the last we saw the, the Green Arrow, wasn't he dead? So are they going to do a time travel situation again? Probably. In the flash? Yeah. yeah. Or he's going to haunt his dreams or something. Something like that. I don't know if he's dead or is he in another realm? I don't remember. Maybe. There was something about him being on an island somewhere. For five long years? Yeah. I know, and now I know he came back in the story, but I think he went back to that island or something. Well, I watched pretty much all of it. He at some point kept going back to Lian Yu and then going back and forth and do all this stuff. I think at the end of the series, he was technically dead. His daughter had kind of taken over, and Felicity was like helping her out and doing some stuff. And then I guess Felicity dies or goes into like some other dimension or something right. and goes to be with him or something like that. So, I mean, it could, that could be a situation where they bring him back, but I don't know. I'm excited. I, I liked the green arrow in the CW shows. I, I mean, for the most part, I mean, for the first couple seasons, it was really good. And then it started just getting really Everything dark got for terrible. No green arrow got terrible. Everything else got terrible. We don't need to worry about that anymore. Right. So, Sorry, my internet crashed. That's all right. We thought you were just choking on your own rage about Netflix. I kept thinking about 1899 and then the beginning. Yeah, of the I was music thinking game. that you needed kind of you needed a moment to yourself. <laughs> That's actually what happened. I got really angry. <laughs> Hold the plug. Or just meowing at me, and I was like, "You're about to get canceled, cat!" And I just fucking shut up. <laughs> um, some other news that came out. So we f we got to see uh, photos, about four or five photos for History of the World Part Two. The Mel Jeez. continuation to the Mel Brooks franchise. It's a TV series, not a movie, and it's going to Hulu. And here's where I know it's going to be terrible. One, it's 40 years too late. Two, <laughs> yeah. yeah, we already know what happens. The people in, in charge of the of the show, I have no confidence in. Uh, Wanda Sykes, uh, Ian Barinholtz, and Nick Kroll. Oh, I hate. Is it Ike Barinholtz or Ian Barinholtz? I think it's Ike. Oh, I wrote Ian. Sorry, it is Ike. That's okay. You're right. So Ike, Ike Barinholtz and Nick Kroll. I just didn't know if there was another Barinholtz. They out there. are serving as <laughs> leads 
co-writers and I think uh, uh, Wanda Sykes is like head producer of this. So mm-hmm. you know this is not going to be the Mel Brooks style of comedy inappropriate for the for the right reasons of being inappropriate. So uh, after waiting 40 years, the, uh, there is finally a sequel to the uh, Mel Brooks film History of the World Part 1 with each episode featuring a variety of sketches that take yeah, us through different periods show. of human history. This is just going to be anybody's sketch show and they're just putting History of the World as the title for it. This is not going to be good. I thought it was yeah. a joke, so I didn't know it was real until you said that there was actual pictures. And now I'm just really, I'm, 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 I'm just, you just made me angry tonight, Eric. So, so segment two is making Giddles very Oh, upset I'm so tonight. angry. I'm uh, take number two said, I can't wait to hear about two. Jews in space, though. Uh, that's where we got our space lasers from. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> the space lasers. Uh, so, yeah, that's coming. I don't have a release date or time for that yet, but Hulu just put out the photos where you can take a look, and it does not look promising no it, it doesn't it looks it no looks like a bad it. comedy central sketch show uh what else do we have here scream six is coming out march 10th they just put um, a photo out for a poster for the new ghost face what that looks like um, Sound like ghost days giddles another favorite of giddles uh that 90s show comes out on <laughs> netflix <laughs> next week uh serenity now. So tonight. serenity now <laughs> Right. Where's my little book of calm? <laughs> uh, what else do we have here that came out? Uh, did we talk about that they're making a sequel to the 1996 blockbuster Twister? Why are yeah, they making a we... 90s show and canceling 1899? That has 99 in it. That's a 90s. Keep that 90s show. And it's I told the you, the 90s show is getting like three seasons, too. You know it's oh, going to be Oh, it's going to have seasons. like 40 seasons. So it's like the 2029 show. <laughs> uh, the 1996 blockbuster Twister has a new sequel coming out on July 19th of 2024 called anybody twisters ooh plural yes it's not even about the now they're hunting in packs not even about the infamous Clever rabbit girl. KFC that they <laughs> Stop away. you're looking at one twister and the two twisters come in from the <laughs> other side, side. <laughs> I'm into Jurassic Park twister now we're like just Dinosaur right. twisters just fucking throwing. It's not even finger. Oh, Jeff Goldblum. There are twisters on this tour, right? It's not even finger yeah. of God. It's God's hands just punching down with all five fingers. Yeah. Just <laughs> take that Heartland and just beat uh, up Texas you, you and punch everything up, else. Not down, God. <laughs> Eric punches out the second they say bomb cyclone. Ugh. Wait, bomb cyclone. Out. It's the fist of God. <laughs> <laughs> That should be the title. It's just it's, it's a bunch of tornadoes looking like a fist, and they're just, it's about to punch a cow in a trailer park or something. Oh man, so stupid! I don't know. I think you've sold me on wanting to actually watch Twisters now. I think I want to actually see it. Anything else we come up with is going to be better than that sequel. What the, they'll pull point. out in two years. Um, another sequel, Evil Dead Rise. That oh. trailer just came out. It's due out in theaters on April twenty first. I will not watch it. Uh, Jordan's is like, this is not something you're going to enjoy. And I agree mm-hmm. with you because you told me some things in the trailer and I am glad I did not watch it. Um, did not understand fully that the newest horror icon is a cheese grater. And we'll leave <laughs> it at that. Um, yeah. But the Red Band trailer is on YouTube if you want to watch it. It's a little over two minutes. So if you want to go check that out. It ditches the uh, the the comedy of like Evil Dead 2 and Army of Darkness. He is so fucking big. He is. That's a big cat. And and it kind of follows the, I believe it was a 2013, 2014 Evil Dead reboot. So it's kind of more dark, more real, just bloody and crazy. And it looks really good. I'm excited for it. I'm not a... Uh, I haven't seen the trailer. I'm just going to watch it. Is it on Netflix? No. It's okay, then maybe I'll give it a chance because they won't cancel it. No, it's a Irish director. I think what they're doing is that they're... they're I think Raimi is producing and I think he co-wrote and I believe... Um, Bruce Campbell is producing and it's being directed by uh, an Irish director. He's done a few smaller projects. Uh, Like the last movie was done by uh, like a Spanish director that wasn't really well known. So I think there's not a lot of expectation, which is good because then you go in and you actually like the property. Like if you threw in, you know, whatever big director that everyone loves then you go in with some expectation this one the trailer looks gnarly it's directed by the low cost Irish equivalent Steven Soderbread 
<laughs> I love soda bread. Mm-hmm. I, I'm just so angry about everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so, so angry. Um, uh, HBO on January 15th. That will be next week. Um, the Last of Us, the TV show. Is going oh, to, so TV excited. series will Comes be there next Sunday. Also tied in with that, uh, the creator of the the video game series, Neil Druckmann, said uh, that there could be a part three because there's more to the story that he wants to tell. Mm-hmm. So the first game was is legendary. I've never really, I didn't play the second or it was sit down and watch through the second, but I've heard people like the second. Uh, second game in the franchise here. So if they're going to do a third one, it seems like a no-brainer if he's got more story to tell and it's the original right. creator. It's well, not I guess like it's not the last of them. The second to the last. <laughs> the penultimate. If it's on Netflix, it'll be the last of them. <laughs> right. Uh, so you have that to look forward to. And finally, we're going to end with some trailers here that we have. What trailer would you like to watch? Do you want to watch... Um, do you want to watch the Reinfeld trailer? We want to watch. Bow, 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 bow. <laughs> What's the deal? with sucking blood out of people's necks. We have What's the Reinfeld the trailer. We have uh, Ryan Johnson, who you may know uh, was in the news uh, lately for not being happy with Knives Out in the Glass Onion title for his uh, Glass Onion movie, which was not canceled, but is on Netflix. Right. Uh, so this is he has another movie coming out called Poker Face. So we have that trailer. I don't think here. I've ever seen anything on that. And one. then we have a trailer for a South Korean action sci-fi movie called Jung E. If I'm pronouncing that right, J U N G, and then E. Is, right is after it. Secret, if it starts with a J, it's most likely Young. Oh, Young Young E then. Yeah, probably. Like uh, a rapper. And it's on Netflix. So every all the cast members have tattoos all over their faces. Well, if it's on Netflix, I'm not watching it, but I'll watch the trailer. I think Renfield. Uh, the trailer looks fun. I, I I watched it earlier. I saw the Renfield trailer while the show was queuing up because it played on our station on Twitch. It just said, watch Renfield, and I watched the trailer. Okay. Yeah. It's got the guy who's not quite uh, Tom Cruise, not quite Adam Scott, but they got him anyway. And yeah. He looks like a cross He's the guy both. from Mad Max, uh, Fury Road. No. Yeah, he was the one with the bald head that was always yeah. huffing paint. He was in the oh, menu. Okay. I also want to point night? out that the fact I did not watch the menu that it, it's, it's apparent that Gittles does not subscribe to the channel because he had to watch the commercials in order to get to the feed. <laughs> so thanks for uh, that. that um, all right. So we don't watch Reinfeld. We uh, we have Poker I don't Face. Care. Watch any of them. I'm not, we have Poker, poker Face, face. or, or uh, Young E. Uh, let's go with Young E. Okay. Yeah, that sounds fun. All right, Young E is, uh, it just says here, Humanity's Hope, an Ultimate Weapon AI Combat Warrior, Young E. And it is coming January 20th on Netflix. So well, that's like tomorrow. That's two weeks well, from now. The good now. thing is, is Netflix is probably just releasing it. It's probably already been made, so at least you'll it's get It's probably already been canceled. They're going to pull the feed in mid-watch. <laughs> <laughs> so you're in the middle of it, so this. This file does no longer exist. Not enough people were where you were at that time. So yeah, we not enough people maybe. were as excited as you were. Sorry, we canceled life. All right, let's watch this here. Did they just not have enough to put the L in there? To I was going to say jungle. jungle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We ran out of budget to do the title, so it's we can't e. afford the L's. All right, let's just slap an Asian thing on there and say it's Young E. Okay, well, that works. It, it, it's an underscore mark, Eric. It's not some like Asian symbol. It's just an underscore. <laughs> <laughs> some weird Cyrillic. Uh, is this Asian RoboCop or Bob of Oliver? Um, could be. I don't know. It's it's a whole bunch of things. It, it's more video game than it is a. a it really a is. Television I'll be show. perfectly honest with you. I don't have any interest in watching that. I'm probably not going to see that. All right. I'm not going to probably watch it when it first drops, but I'll most likely end up catching it eventually. Okay. Catch it before it's canceled. Looks fun. <laughs> Do you want to watch? It's not a series. Uh, you want to watch the Poker Face trailer then from Ryan Johnson? Sure. Is it him just like stabbing people in the face with a poker? And he's like, "Now nah, you're poker." It's face. it's his uh, lady. Gaga now you're Prune Tracy. Epic. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> No, your dick face. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> See, you should have just showed the picture. Yeah. Like that? There you go. There oh, you go. no. <sighs> what a so dick. Bad. It started off like this and ended with Netflix disappointment. Oof. All right. I'm surprised he had time to do this movie. I thought like you were going to say that tattoo. I was like, I, I would so have all bad. the time in the world to do that tattoo. <laughs> uh, so... Uh, Poker Face. Oh, wait, it's not a movie. It's a television series. I thought it was a oh, movie. 
canceled. Poker Face starts streaming January 26th on Peacock. Uh, is a 10 episode mystery of the week series following Natasha Leone's Charlie, who has an extraordinary ability to determine when someone is lying. So it's like a monster of the week type. So is it like an X Files thing, but more procedural? I don't know, but Adrian Brody's in, in this thing. So let's take a look. Ugh, huh. bro. Uh, What's it like? Always knowing the truth. There's nothing mystical about it. I could just tell. And anyone is lying. Yeah. I know what you did, you psycho. You're gonna find Charlie Kill, and you're gonna bring it in. Oh, it's Benjamin Brown. Is that Ron Perlman? Yeah. Who just turned like? I think his birthday road, was either today or yesterday. Leave everything behind. Start fresh. I got wolves on my fender. This is it slums oh, of Beverly Hills? Holy, holy! I like her, but her voice sometimes no, bothers me. I, I think there's been a murder. Like she's been smoking since birth. Yeah, she she sounds like an actress. Hey, <laughs> Look out! You talk like an ash tree looks. I have been kind of a death magnet. I think Ryan Johnson's upset that they said from the director of Knives Out on this. He <laughs> watched too much Dateline. I could tell she was lying. What is it? It's a woman's intuition? No, it's not. Oh, it's Gomez. Why is he so fat? I mean, that, that's a kind of a personal question. No, but. P H A T? Come with me. That's a that's a pretty stacked cast, though. It is. It's weird. They said that, like, there's only like, ten episodes, so like one of them in each episode. I guess so. Right. They just split it out. <laughs> it's weird. This little subgenre of programming that they're doing, where everything looks like it's set in the '70s. Yeah, I know. It's, yeah. It's I mean, this could you just be in the you South. They're still behind. Yeah, but it has like the outfits and everything yeah. else. Uh, the cars always has a '70s feel to everything. Well, I, it's kind of like where it's yeah, like so everything was more simplistic then. You didn't have to no rely rules. on throwing on the GPS to get somewhere or get on your cell phone and look something up. Like there's right. something to be said about having that set in that time frame. So that might be fun. I guess. He said it's Peacock. It's on Peacock. Right. There's a lot of stuff coming out this month. You know, we're going into the worst parts of the year, but there's a lot of programming coming out, apparently. Oh, um, what's coming out? Uh, Megan's coming out tomorrow. Well, oh, yeah. I'm going tomorrow what, night. Explain what Megan is. It's basically so this little girl's family gets killed. Her Wait, aunt is it is, it is it part of another franchise? No, no it's like no. the beginning of what's probably going to be. A it's new going franchise. to be a franchise because uh, this is already getting like ninety five percent. on. Didn't mean to cut you off, but it, it sounded the way this was described. I thought it was like a spinoff of like Conjuring or something else. It's the same, it's the same um, company Blumhouse. OK. And I think uh, maybe James Wan produced it. Um, but it's a um, it's a Kiwi director. Um, he did a movie called Housebound that I really liked. Could we watch um, the trailer? Would that be, or did you guys? I mean, you can. It? But yeah, that's coming out. I mean, it's out tonight on Thursday. It'll be out when this airs. So yeah. Oh, yeah, I've seen the trailer. I laughed so hard at this. I'm going trailer. tomorrow night. Oh, that CGI looks sure. terrible. Uh, I'm Meg not going to go Sunday. Is gonna be I'll great. catch like a matinee for that on Sunday. Yeah, I'm going tomorrow night um, <laughs> so we can talk about it Saturday when we record. But yeah, I, it looks ridiculous. And it's it, I expected this to be just bad. And right now it's like 95 with 60 reviews. Well, like, here's the, the thing. Oh. So on the Rotten Tomatoes, it says horror comedy. But oh, before, yeah. <laughs> before the ratings changed, it was just horror. Yeah. So I'm like right. wondering if like they they got that people were laughing at it and we're like they let's, let's into just it. let's like lean into it make it PG-13 cut out some of the more of the horror and maybe we can get people to watch oh. this cuz it's funny. Maybe. Like so they had I'm like a, they had a potential Rocky Horror Picture Show situation where that movie and was meant to be like terrifying and whatever and became the, like a huge joke. Yeah, yeah I heard they cut out a lot of laughing. Like, yeah, they cut out a lot of like some of the more violent scenes, but like Giddles was saying, from what people were saying in test screenings, that, that it works better that way. Well, here's what they did. Um, by doing that and lowering the age, look, I didn't know this was a, a, such a big thing, but like teenage girls love 
uh, haunted dolls is a whole thing. Did you know about this? About creepy looking dolls that are su- su- supposedly have like a story of being possessed or channeling past lives and stuff. Yeah, it's because their moms collected beanie babies. Right. right. So haunted dolls is apparently a subgenre of culture that that mostly younger girls like. Murderous cabbage patch. So Megan fits into that yeah. genre there, and you know that translates to t-shirts and stuff that's going to be at Hot Topic, at Box Lunch, and other places like that. So Box Lunch? Box Lunch. Yeah, it's a like a place. offshoot of um, Hot Topic. Same company, Yeah, but they, they focus have cool, more on really like cool the stuff. nerdy stuff. Right. Disney and money. they also donate to food kitchens 10 percent of all their sales and stuff go mm-hmm. to local food kitchens and stuff in every market that they're in so um i think that's what it is if it was meant to be really horrific and, and deadly and people were laughing at it and they leaned into that they just accidentally opened up a huge marketing uh, treasure chest for themselves have you seen how they're marketing this movie though like they're having i haven't seen anything dress up as since uh t- until we watched this sorry yeah they have people dressed up as megan going to all these things like uh like a rams game last yeah. weekend during the halftime show they had like seven or eight girls dressed like megan dancing in the middle of the the football oh field. so they like, did like yeah. what smile did when they were standing behind live broadcast yes yeah but stuff. this time it's a little, a little bit more obvious but yeah it's it's the same kind of like gorilla marketing um yeah they've got videos of just all these different megan's dancing around like they've leaned into that one hallway scene from the trailer be great if a bunch of gorillas just came in and started ripping <laughs> the dolls all over the place like <laughs> oh and two is the count and you're just seeing gorillas beating these little <laughs> these oh god robots. why is he wearing a megan shirt and beating up the, the, the guy in the field yeah so I, I, I i'm baseball, excited it looks ridiculous all right well, that's it. We uh, we've gone too long and too far for this program, but it's the the first Kittles one of the man. year. We'll uh, we have a whole year to uh, refine and calm Gittles down. Go play some escape room, and that'll uh, that'll help you. Out. That's not gonna make me any calm. <laughs> <laughs> I played, gets on there. They canceled the game on him. I it's played like, the hey, new one with Gittles the other night. It was a lot of fun. It's fun, right? Yeah. yeah. We had no idea what we were doing. I couldn't understand the maps. <laughs> And uh, somehow we lucked into two different things. Like, how did you unlock that? I don't know. I was spinning numbers and I hit something. That's funny. And we were I like, left I left three of the numbers in place that I knew were right. I couldn't figure out what the last one was. And you were just spinning them. And you're like, oh, it opened. I'm like, cool. You figured out whatever the last one <laughs> It's like one every was. time we do a gold vault and Gittles is trying to solve the puzzle. I'm like, all right, man, I just trust you. Like, I have no idea yeah. what's yeah. going I'm on. I'm going to drown. I'll grab the treasure from up top. Hopefully exactly. we can get the most expensive thing. If not, I like yep. puzzles. Yeah, it, it is what it is. <laughs> All right. Plug time. Gittles, the nation's eyes turn to you. Uh, Gittlebase Twitter, Instagram, Xbox Live, twitch.tv slash Gittlebase. Number of the feast returning. Uh, when is this air? Yesterday, I believe. <laughs> uh, it was a great show. I loved it. Uh, thank you all no, for coming to hang out. No, it's out the same day this comes out. Today. <laughs> oh, today. Yeah, so I'm taping it right now. Uh, <laughs> Gittles doesn't know how to time travel. It's I don't right. know how to time travel anymore. Uh, it's all a simulation. Uh, yeah, that's that's all I got to plug. All right, Josh, what do you have? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to change my name at that's this point. Stupid potato. Go ahead. Ah, stupid potato. <laughs> Thank you, potato. Uh, Jinx Ronan on all the social media. I also do a podcast called I'll Watch It Later Podcast. Um, this weekend we're doing our snack show, so we got a lot of stuff that we're gonna try out. All the new snacks. We raided all the Valentine's chocolates and stuff too, so we got a lot to eat this weekend. So check us out. We're on uh, Instagram. I don't Facebook. Who cares? No one cares about Facebook. But yeah, check us out on Instagram. All that fun stuff. Do you know how? I'll watch it later. Do you know how you're, you're completely right about the Facebook? I can tell by certain commercials and certain platforms oh, yeah. where, depending on the age of the audience, they still promote Facebook for other yeah, for things. the older folk. Facebook is not promoted in a lot of younger stuff. Neither is Snapchat, and people are still apparently like kids and and, and young adults still use Snapchat. Yeah, but you don't see it promoted anywhere. Like nobody's no. plugging their Snapchat handle. Nobody's plugging it on the end of commercials and stuff. It's all TikTok and Instagram. Still. Yeah, that's what. Right, we primarily use Instagram, and it connects to our Facebook because yep. it's all connected. But I never post anything there. It's all just Instagram. There's been plenty of times I'm posting consumer shit, and it goes to the radio show, and I go like, "All right, well, I'll, I'm just." I I'm guess it's going. there. Yeah. So we Have do that. that. Uh, 
I, I try to utilize TikTok. I'm still new at doing it all. Of it. I, I handle most of all the social media, so I usually stick to like Instagram and have Aaron do the do stuff. the Megan dance while he's eating some snacks. That'll get your numbers up. You know what? If I knew that would actually help, maybe I would do it. But I'm I'm, a, I'm trying to get the numbers up, not down. <laughs> Well, it's not going to go down any more than it is. So the everything, throw anything at the wall and see if it sticks. Uh, yeah, for yeah. me and the show and everything else on here, uh, it's Eric Nagel across the board and all the social medias. You can find uh, links to the video, audio, all that stuff right there. Look at all the, the graphics that we're playing with. Everything's so right there. Uh, go to itseriknagel.com as the links for uh, everything for this show, audio, video. We'll find all that stuff. Uh, also for Would You Kindly, the other show I do with Brian Johnson. If you were watching us live, thank you very much for being in the YouTube room or the Twitch room, uh, both with the respective handles at It's Eric Nagel. And if you're listening through iHeartRadio or on demand through Spotify, Apple, or any places that you find your podcasts and you want to join us in the live rooms, um, go to the YouTube channel, go to the Twitch channel, sign up there. It does actually help us out. We would appreciate it. I think that's I think I want to do a real quick shout out to David, man. This guy came into Twitch and literally gave everybody subscriptions. So, you know, yeah, that's, David that's Chandler awesome. in the Twitch room gave uh, 10 subscriptions out today. Thank you. 20 he more than that. 20? He gave out more. 28 yeah. last time I saw. He was giving them to oh me and I'm like, I'm on the show. Well, give one to Giddles because he should have one. <laughs> he watched the whole trailer before the show started. <laughs> everybody. All right. So. Now I won't see any trailers. Well, I appreciate uh, appreciate Thank you. For that was not necessary, rage, but very David. kind of you to do so. There, I, the way my setup is right now, I can't see. And the, the ten thousand bits. The also. Twitch room. He also donated ten thousand bits. All right, let's uh, give you that up so Giddles can get a subscription to there the channel go. and see what's going on here. All right, uh, we are done. We are out of here. Until the next time, everybody. Be excellent to each other. And have a wonderful time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be seeing you. <laughs> Sorry, I was yawning. He's Eric Nagel. Did you abscond with the church funds? Did you run off with the senator's wife? I like to think that you killed a man. It's the romantic in me. It's a combination of all three. Alas, we're out of time. Follow It's Eric Nagel on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. For ways to listen to the show, go to itseriknagel.com. Remember to tell two friends so they can tell two friends. And they can tell two friends. And they can tell two friends. And those two friends can tell two friends. They can tell two friends. Well, you get the idea. Keep it real, homies.